at the number of people we have here. All right, welcome. This is September 27th, 2011. Um, it is the 7 o'clock school committee meeting. I realize it is 7.10. And um, we are about ready to be called to order in open session. Um, unfortunately, last week, um, the school committee member, I mean, the school, um, the school district um, suffered the loss of Jewel, of June Malpino died last week and so I would request that after we stand and say the pledge to the flag that we have a moment of silence for June. So um, with that, why don't we go ahead and stand up and say the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Lorene, if you could do the roll call vote, please. Linda Abenzado. Bellboy Benson. Here. Larry Cerisi. William Munch. Present. Kimberly Page. Here. Joe Thompson. Here. Richard Welsh. Here. Julia Held. Here. Thank you. All right. Next we have calendars. September 28th, tomorrow is a wellness committee meeting, 330 Central Administration Building. Also tomorrow, September 28th, consolidation committee meeting, 4 p.m. Central Administration Building. Se September 29th is going to be a regular school day per the revised calendar due to um, the days off during Hurricane Irene on Rosh Hashanah. October 4th, budget subcommittee meeting, 11 a.m. Central Administration Building. October 10th, Columbus Day, all schools and offices closed. October 11th, school committee work session, 7 p.m. at Kingstown High School. October 17th, joint meeting with the town council, 6 p.m. and that will be at Beachwood Senior Center. October 17th, also a CELAC meeting at 7 p.m. Central Administration Building. October 18th, Policy Subcommittee meeting, 11 a.m., Central Administration Building. October 25th, School Committee Business Meeting, North Kingstown High School Cafeteria. Thank you. Um, Lorraine, could you note for the record that we have our student rep is back here tonight, so I'd like to welcome him. If you could want to introduce yourself to the committee. <laughs> is it, oh, introduce it. yourself. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I, um, my name is Brendan Bowerly. I'm the co-editor-in-chief of this year's Current Wave, and I'm one of the student representatives of the school committee. Thank you uh, very thank you much. Thank you for having me. We're glad Welcome to have you back. To the All right. Next, we have um, presentations by uh, Dr. Tom Kenworthy. Um, Dr. Jay, do you want to say anything? Sure. I'd just like to uh, introduce Dr. Kenworthy and Ms. Roy, who are going to talk to us tonight about um, our SAT scores, which just came out. Very happy with the results on those, and also um, our e-portfolio. Um, neither of these are items that we need to uh, be voting on. They're purely informational, but they're um, uh, good information for us to be aware of and for the community to be aware of as well. Good evening. We are happy to report the SAT results that we got back. Um, you have some information on you right there. If you look at it, we were number one in the state for test takers. We had the largest population taking the test. We were third in the state in reading, seventh in math, and third in writing. So we are very happy with the output that we got from our seniors mm -hmm. and juniors taking the exam. 319 SAT test takers were given. This is up from 253 and from 246 in 2009. So you're seeing a trend in more students wanting to take the test, they're 
looking to go on to four-year colleges, so that's an incredible increase, and we're very happy with that. This is number one in the state of Rhode Island. Even though we are a large high school, there are other large high schools in this state, and we are number one with students wanting to participate in that, and I think that's huge. In 2011, we had a mean score of 539 in reading. This is above the state average at 482. We were ranked third in the state. And in 2010, our mean score was 531, and we were ranked six. So again, we improved our scores. We're going up a little bit each time. In the math, we had a mean score of 531. We are again above the state average at 482. We were ranked seventh in the state, and our mean score was 535, and we were ranked five in Rhode Island last year. So again, some of this trend may be because we had more students taking the exam, which again, we're very happy with, so that fluctuates from time. So we were still around some of the same averages that we had, but we're definitely above the state average. In the writing, we had the mean score of 533. This is again above the state average. We are third in the state, and then we have above our mean score of 524, so we're continually improving in the writing. We were ranked sixth last year, we're ranked third this year. So overall, as a, one of the administrators in teaching and learning, I'm very happy with the output and students taking the test. It means that our focus is very clear on a very strong academic tradition here at North Kingstown High School. Good. Thank you. Good. Great. So while Ms. Roy is getting up the next presentation, um, again, we wanted to start with, with uh, the presentation on the SAT results because a lot of positive news, news there, and we certainly wanted to showcase that. And um, I you probably have to hit. Um, Okay, so this next presentation, I uh, just wanted to make sure that the school committee had information on this because uh, we, we are going to start rolling more of this out to the student body um, throughout the school year. And it does represent some changes from um, some of the, the practices we had in place regarding ePortfolio. So, you know, as, as you're hearing about them and, uh, you know, as, as things start to progress throughout the school year, we wanted to make sure that you had the context. A lot of information here. I know there should have been uh, some other background information in your packet, so I'm not going to read through uh, every, every point that I have here in the, in the, uh, in the presentation. But essentially the, the ePortfolio is one of our uh, two proficiency-based graduation requirements. So in addition to the courses that students take when they go through North Kingston High School and they have to have a certain number of credits, and for us at North Kingston High School it's 24 credits um, by the time they're seniors in order to be able to award a diploma. They obviously have to pass those classes or in the credits. We have the, the state testing uh, and the ways that NECAP is now going to start to factor in um, as students progress through the grades, and you know we'll hear more about that when we start talking about NECAP. But in addition, every school in the state of Rhode Island has to have two proficiency-based gradu graduation measures. So at North Kingstown High School, we have the senior project, which although there's a lot of uh, building up to that throughout the years and, and backgrounds that, that uh, teachers do to prepare students throughout all grades, most of what takes place with senior project really happens in the senior year, and it culminates with uh, a presentation. Many of you have sat in on, on those presentations that, that students give at the end of their senior year, and it's really the culminating you know, piece to uh, what they, they do before they're getting ready to graduate. So our other proficiency measure is the ePortfolio. And uh, you know, it's an electronic portfolio where students collect their work throughout their years. Uh, the way our system is designed here, our ePortfolio is essentially a ninth through 11th grade requirement, so that it is designed by the second semester or end of junior year, students should be able to complete their ePortfolio requirement. So as they go through uh, each class that they take throughout ninth through 11th grade, they have 
one required what we call anchor assignment. So those are the, the key pieces that go into our ePortfolio. There's one required anchor assignment per class per semester. So you know, in a full year class, that's essentially two anchor assignments for a one semester elective, which uh, you know, many of our electives are, that's at least one anchor assignment. So the culmination of the ePortfolio takes place in the second semester or spring of junior year. So really what we're talking about here in building up to that is the first five semesters that a student spends here at North Kingston High School. So you've got the two in freshman year, two in sophomore year, and then that fall, that first semester of junior year. By second semester of junior year, they should be getting ready to finish up their ePortfolio piece, then again move on to senior year and all, all the senior requirements and senior project. Uh, one of the things that happened was after the 2010 Commissioner's Review, which reviewed the graduation system at North Kingston High School, and I'm not going to go back and relive a lot of that. We, you know, uh, we all went through it. Uh, the results that came back were less than favorable for North Kingston High School, and there were some changes that, that the school knew that it had to uh, institute. In regards to ePortfolio, a lot of the feedback that the school received was that the system was not rigorous enough, and so we had to do uh, you know, some work to make it more rigorous. So you know, we spent a lot of time doing that last school year, and part of that, uh, at the end of that 2009-2010 uh, year, when the Commissioner's Review feedback came in, uh, the school, in order to make the ePortfolio more rigorous you know, on, on paper and to be able to demonstrate to the Department of Ed, we put a requirement in place ramping up the number of anchor assignments starting with the class of 2014, that would have been last year's freshman class, this year their sophomores, to 27 what we, we were calling mandatory anchor assignments. Well, last year, as, as I took over as principal, and, and Ms. Roy can certainly attest to this, we lived the implementation of that. So we certainly, you know, everybody's all for making the system more rigorous, but what we heard from every stakeholder at North Kingston High School, from students to parents to staff members, was that, you know, this 27 mandatory anchor assignment um, requirement was going to be very difficult to manage for, for everyone, for students, for staff, you know, and, and for parents kind of living with that at home. So, what, you know, we, we lived through it last year, but while we were doing that, we also took the time to, to kind of study, uh, check in on how it was going, had extensive conversations with, with students, staff, and parents. Uh, we also went out and visited other schools, and then we were in consultation last year with the district leadership, Dr. Ajay, obviously, and Dr. Thornton at the time, and with the Department of Education. And so, okay, how can we ensure that there's more rigor in our ePortfolio system, but also make it more manageable? Because, you know, with everything else that, that students have going on in their lives now, and you know, it's a lot harder to graduate from high school than it's ever been in the state of Rhode Island. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of good things that come of that, that we know when we're giving a student a diploma that it really means something. But we also have to understand that we need to, to make this a manageable and livable process for everyone. So what we agreed upon here, the next slides are basically going to go through what, again, after kind of living through the system last year, looking at what, what, okay, what are some changes that we can put in place to make this a little more manageable, keep the rigor, make sure that we're meeting all the requirements we need to with the system. These next few slides get into that. First is just kind of setting the context that, you know, we, we certainly, uh, the portfolio needs to, to be a collection of work which students are demonstrating proficiency in all of the key areas uh, throughout all the subjects. Again, they take a, f a full year course. They're going to have two anchor assignments to choose from. A, a one semester elective, they're going to have at least one anchor assignment to choose from. Through the first semester of junior year, that's 35 anchor assignment opportunities that students can choose from. But really, in looking around at other schools and going out and visiting other schools and talking with Ride, one of the important things in, in a sound uh, portfolio system is that students get to have a little bit of choice as to what goes in there. So we want to make sure the process is more rigor rigorous, but we want to <coughs> make sure that students can have some choice about putting what they feel is their best work into that portfolio. So we tried to, to uh, make some changes to the system that would reflect that last year. So what this slide represents is this is the class of 2013. This is our current junior <coughs> class. None of the changes were ever going to affect them. One of the things that we try to do is when a class comes in, 
uh, from freshman year, if we are going to make changes, we, we, we try to make sure that it's not going to affect them uh, and adversely where all of a sudden we're dumping more on them. So even when we talk about the 27 mandatory we, we, that we put in place um, and lived through last year, uh, it did not affect this class at all. So you know, we're, we're keeping everything the way it was for this current junior class. Uh, they, they needed to have a total of 15 anchor assignments in their portfolio. That's still going to be the case for them. Again, that's through their, their first five semesters of time that they're here at North Kingstown High School. Uh, when, when we talk about the number of anchor assignments in the portfolio, we do break that down so that they need to have a certain number by subject area. So for instance, three math, three science, three social studies, and so on. One change, though, that is going to go into effect for uh, the class of 2013, these juniors, is that uh, RIDE did come out with some revised regulations last year. Again, kind of what we were living through, feedback that they received from several, uh, you know, many other schools. Uh, and uh, there are a number of schools like us that have both ePortfolio and Senior Project. And uh, what had been happening was that RIDE was requiring a, a kind of culminating presentation for both of those requirements. Now Ride is saying you only have to do the presentation for one of them and you can choose which of those, those two requirements. You know, if you have both portfolio and senior project, you can choose which one you want to do the presentation for. So as we, we, we talked extensively and worked through those changes, um, uh, we decided it worked best for us if we kept the presentation for senior project. So ePortfolio will now, there'll be a culminating piece at the end that'll come in the second semester of junior year, but it's probably going to be more of a written reflection that students will do. And then this would represent now, starting with what would be our current sophomore class, where the changes, which we're hoping, again, this has received positive feedback from students, parents, and staff. So we just want to lock this in place and have it be there now, uh, have a consistent um, you know, message that we can deliver as students come in. So it would be 19 total uh, assignments that would need to be in a student's portfolio by the end of junior year, by that second semester. Uh, again, they, they do that summative culminating piece. Those 19 assignments have to come in, in each of those areas that are listed there. And uh, the, the, again, it's 19 out of 35, so it does give the students a little bit of choice as to which, you know, what they consider their best work what they want to, to go into that portfolio. Okay, and then this last slide here, uh, one of the other worlds that we have to live in, you know, we certainly have you know, the importance of what goes on in the classroom and we need to make sure that we're uh, you know, keeping in good standing with the Department of Ed and our graduation requirements, but you know, at the high school level, we also live in that NEASC world. <coughs> and we have, at North Kingston High School, we have our NEASC 10-year accreditation visit coming up in the fall of 2013. So you're going to start to hear more and more about that as we're building up to it. And there are certain things that we need to make sure that you know we're always doing, that we're always aligning our work to make sure that we're also uh, staying in good favor with the, the NEAS standards and that as we're getting ready for our NEAS accreditation. So we have what we call these uh, NKHS school-wide expectations. They're broken down into those four areas there. And, uh, as you, th th and that comes from the NEASC world, but we also try to tie that into the portfolio system as well so that students know they have to have at least one proficient assignment under what would be the NEASC academic expectations, one proficient assignment under the communication piece, and so forth. And so there's also a little bit of tie in there with uh, the, uh, the NEASC um, uh, standards. Okay. So that's, again, uh, the, the quickest review that I could give you on that, but you know, we're, we're very pleased. We've received a lot of positive feedback already. And again, we're just trying to get a system in place that is certainly both rigorous, but also manageable for everybody involved in the system. So thank you. Could you uh, uh, <clears throat> give me an idea on how, how the grading systems work this? I understand at one time it was very difficult, uh, whatever the standard was for uh, giving a, a ultimately a grade for the e portfolio is it one grade or is it two grades or you know how, how does that work and and do you have the, the, the that that down pat now in terms of uh, testing the kids or? Uh, you know the down pat is it's always uh, an interesting uh, world that we live in here um, because again traditionally you know high school schools in general we're, you know we're used to the grades like you said you take a class you, you take quizzes tests you know, you do certain things and you get a grade. 
Well, everything that comes out of the ride world now and uh, the, you know, the graduation expectations is all about proficiency. And you know, we have to make sure that students are proficient. Well, how do you determine that? You know, so it's a little difficult sometimes to, to, to look and, and match that up directly with grades. But certainly, when it comes to ePortfolio, in order to be completely finished and kind of check that off as a graduation requirement, we have to be able to, to say, okay, this student is proficient. So it means that they have to have the, the number of proficient assignments we require, whether it's 15 for this year's junior class or then 19 for each class after that. You know, those assignments have to be proficient. So at the classroom level, you know, as the science teacher or the math teacher gave those assignments, they were graded at the classroom level. They did also factor into the class grades. So there's a little, you know, there's incentive there, obviously, for students to do the assignment and do well on it because it's tied into the overall course grade. But, you know, they know that they, they have to be rated proficient in it by the teacher in order for it to go into their portfolio. So after, for example, the freshman year, at the end of the year, regarding the e-portfolio, e you'll have it either proficient or not proficient so they can hopefully make up any things that were not proficient the following year. So sure. it isn't and something at the end that you come back and... Right. We have, we have an e-portfolio coordinator, so our e-portfolio coordinator will be able to kind of check in. Uh, she is able to kind of keep a running record of where students stand. The other thing that this system does in allowing little choice is it does allow, let's say, you know, the, the student did some assignments in their freshman year and they didn't do as well. And, you know, they, they just want to get into sophomore year and move on. You know, they've, they've got a whole new outlook, you know, coming into their sophomore year. And, you know, they've, they, they've got a fire under them. So now they want to move on. This allows them to do that because, again, they, they'll have some, some choice into what goes into that portfolio. So by the time they're a senior, a senior year, there shouldn't be any surprises. Absolutely Somebody going not. into a senior year should go in, be going into the senior year basically proficient in, in his e-portfolio assignment. Should. And, and, the and, way this and no one should then, therefore, not be able to become proficient, you know, for the four years. Right. And the way that this system is built, again, e-portfolio is essentially a ninth through 11th grade requirement that we have. So okay. we do have some seniors every year, and we have a number this year, who are still dealing with this requirement because they didn't, you know, do enough to meet proficiency in it by the end of their junior year. And again, you know, it's good they have that extra year, but, but now all the other stuff in senior year is starting to pile on there. So but really, you're tracking that right along. They've right. got enough time to make up for that if they aren't proficient at something after three years. Right. Good. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Vincent. Bowerly? Uh, um, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll let you call on this page. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Bowerly. Then Mr. I'm Vincent. sorry uh, for if I interrupted you. Um, I just like to say uh, I like a lot of the changes that you've proposed for ePortfolio, but one thing I, I haven't gone through it myself was when we were first told our junior year when we had a big assembly in this room and everyone is all nervous about ePortfolio, none of us knew what was expected of us for the presentation. We got the rubric about three days before the presentation and we had no idea. Like we had to show a... Um, a reflective piece on the whole ePortfolio assignment. We have to do things like that, and none of us knew about it until about a week before the presentation. And I don't, I don't find that as any fault with the school or the guidance department because I know it's a ton of work to do these things, and you have to help students actually get it done so they, so that they can get to that presentation. But as a student, I feel it would be much more uh, a smoother process if you could get that information to them sooner so that they could prepare themselves. Those are good points. Communication is definitely important. You know, and, and another piece of that is, again, not requiring the presentation now with portfolio. It allows us to, to kind of put closure on the e-portfolio process, and you know, they'll have that presentation now when, when they get into a senior project. My question was an explanation of you use the term proficient. Do you use numerals to say what equals to proficient? Um, again, it's, uh, and I'm not trying to be evasive in my answer. Ride will tell you that proficiency does not necessarily mean a 70. You know, in, in, our, in our courses, in order to pass the course, the student needs to get at least a 70. You know, everybody struggles with this at the high school level. And, and I, you know, these conversations take place among high school, uh, you know, teachers, administrators all the time. I mean, most people, it's very hard for us to then move out of that grading structure 
and, and move into a complete other kind of proficiency structure. So in many cases, in, in most schools, proficiency does look like passing. So a student got at least a 70, you know, or an 80, uh, or better. Uh, but, you know, the, the ride definition of that looks a little different. And, uh, and you know, they will tell you. Dr. Jay. Yeah, I just um, wanted to say, you know, how, how happy I was about, you know, the changes in this program. It seems to be more simplified, more doable, and I, I really appreciate the fact that we're working so closely with the Department of Education. I know that they have been down here a number of times to look at what we're doing. So, you know, there was, there was that worry about that a couple of years ago, and, and I feel like we, we have really mended that relationship. and and we're getting a lot of guidance from them. Um, there's a lot going on at the Department of Education. I think you all know that right now. And the rules <laughs> seem to be changing every couple of months. So to stay on top of this is, is a real chore. But we're doing that, and we're kind of simplifying the process, which is nice, but still keeping it you know, very rigorous. I also want to just say that how impressed I am with the SAT scores. You know, the SAT scores aren't the same as NECAP scores. It doesn't necessarily measure every kid in the grade. But the fact that we have so many more kids wanting to take the SATs, this is a voluntary test. So it means that, the, you know, there's that many more kids interested in, in post-secondary post education, uh, four-year colleges. That's a really good sign. And our percentage in terms of the number of students in, in, uh, as a percentage of our class is as high as just about any school in the state. And in, in reading and writing, we're ranked third. I mean, that's a, a great, great sign for, for our school. So, um, you know, very, very pleased with those results. Mr. Welch. Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, as we rank ourselves within the state, I guess I'm not necessarily concerned with how we stand in the state as much as I'm concerned with how we're doing regionally. Um, you know, we compete. I think uh, with Massachusetts being the top gun in the country, uh, and we're next door. And uh, if Rhode Island is, is number 48 in the country and Massachusetts is number one, you know, how are our kids doing compared to Massachusetts? That, has, that yardstick means a lot more to me than, and, and I'm not saying that, you know, that you, we shouldn't know how we stand in the state, but <clears throat> I think as educators, I think as school committee, as taxpayers and parents, that's ultimately what we need to be concerned with. We keep on talking about how are our kids in this country going to compete with uh, Finland and, and China and Japan, et cetera. Um, how are we competing with the best in, in the country, in this country? Um, and that's something that I keep on asking about, and I hope at some point in time we actually get some kind of relationship to that so that we can judge ourselves against the best. That's a good point. So Dr. Kenworthy, um, I don't see any other hands. So I will say that my junior was very excited when he came home and learned that he did not have to give a presentation this year for his e-portfolio. So um, like I said, I, I think he was very excited. So um, he felt as if progress was made. Oh, nice. And I didn't have any feeling one way or the other. So, if there's there any other, if there's no other questions, thank you very much. We appreciate the great presentation. Thank you. Very informative. Good. Very good. All right. That brings us to correspondence. Okay. I have. Um, go ahead. There's you just one item in the correspondence. It's a requested item about the fund balance. Um, current fund balance uh, after all that has been occurring this year is currently $818,000, um, roughly $818,000. And um, with, that is just a, a standing item that we're going to have on every agenda just to make people aware of where that is. Thank you. <clears throat> I did have received a bit of correspondence myself. Um, Prior to the meeting tonight, uh, Mr. Welch gave me a, um, a letter that he is stepping down from the Consolidation Committee, so I'll pass that over to Lorraine. I also received correspondence from Marissa Eisner about, um, I reported last month that they have, they do a raffle each, um, each week in which they, uh, for the, be, the best you can be raffle, 
and students get entered into the raffle when they are caught doing something respectful, responsible, safe, or ready to learn. And so for Friday the 16th, the winners were Connor Pollock and um, Kyra um, Bolaire, both eighth grade students. The winners on Friday, September 23rd, were Allison O'Connor, eighth grade, and Ian Wiley, seventh grade. So it's very positive. I also received um, correspondence from Wendy Amelot saying that 85% of Forest Park students completed their summer review packet. Um, she was very excited about this excellent return rate, and um, these um, students enjoyed a performance from NED, which is never give up, encourage others, and do your best. So that was um, their part to maintain their excitement towards their academic goal setting. Also, I received a um, correspondence from Tom Kenworthy that the North Kingstown High School field hockey team hosted the field, a field hockey team from Mar College, Scotland. And the Scottish players stayed with the North Kingston players both on Friday and Saturday night. And on Saturday, both teams visited Block Island, had a potluck dinner here at the high school, and then played a game that evening. So um, that was coordinated, coordinated by their field hockey coach, Julie McGuire. So it was very positive. And then the other correspondence I received was from um, Louise Dinette, and she asked us to recognize two of uh, Susan M. Hensler Quinessa teachers, Robin Cook and Lori Proto, who worked diligently over the past several months to develop a school-wide positive behavior program. And they're working collaborati collaboratively with the staff to support and improve the program. So thank you to them. All right, if there is no other course, oh, yes. Um, Mr. Welch and then Mr. Thompson. This came in the, in the form of a verbal uh, correspondence to me, <clears throat> something I w was not aware of, and I, I just want to take a moment to uh, say thank you to Ned Draper. Um, I understand he's been involved in the uh, program, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it wrong, um, with, the, with the youngsters in the elementary school. Um, what, what do they call that program? Uh, links, the, the links program, the, the mentoring program, the mentoring program, and uh, the the grandparent of it of I guess one of the children or the child that that uh, Ned has been working with uh, was effusive of praise about Ned, and I just want to thank him. Uh, Ned doesn't live in this community, um, but uh, as an administrator and, a, and an employee here, um, I think that's something to be uh, 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 thankful for that he's willing to put that effort uh, uh, outside of his, his position as, uh, as the head of the, the finance and, and operations uh, end of our school district. And I just wanted to thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Thompson. Got a correspondence on an email that the uh, town of North Kingstown was awarded a federal grant called Healthy Places by Design. And Denise Kaplan from the YMCA was hired to facilitate the grant and plan for goals to make North Kingstown a healthier place. So that there are meetings that are scheduled, and if anyone is interested in attending these, uh, several of the uh, upcoming ones, I'll just mention two of them. Um, expanding recreational and active living opportunities is on October 5th. Planning and designing mixed use centers is on October 12th. And I believe these meetings are at the Cold Spring Community Center. Um, also, uh, this morning I was uh, uh, pleased to attend a uh, presentation by Dr. Auger. It was conducted at a breakfast session over at the Davisville Elementary School, and it was well attended. Um, the school is, if there's anything <laughs> that uh, uh, looks like a mixed-use center, this is a good example of what we could be uh, looking forward to, and I was very pleased to be able to attend that. Uh, also, I followed up with uh, two of our senators regarding a letter that, was, uh, that they received on uh, August 25th, where the school committee was requesting them to put in a waiver from the requirement of uh, district responsibility to pay for North Kingstown students who wish to attend a charter school. And, um, I, Senator uh, Hodgson indicated he would be willing to put that in, although he does not support it. Uh, Senator James Sheehan um, 
gave me some very good information and suggestions. Uh, I'll share them very briefly with you. One is he said that uh, we should make contacts with two different groups. One is the uh, League of Cities and Towns, who would be in favor of this. And the second group would be the Rhode Island uh, School Committee Association, which is located, headquartered at uh, Rhode Island College. And that uh, he suggested that we as a committee should uh, maybe have a subcommittee to, uh, to keep pursuing this idea, the idea that, um, that if we have high-performing schools and we're meeting the requirements, uh, that, uh, that we would like to be relieved of that extra payment of um, uh, requirement to pay for uh, charter schools in these uh, tough budget times. Thank you. All right. We now are on to citizens' comments. Tonight is a business meeting, so that means that um, this is the time to give citizens' comments that we don't have them before each of the individual agenda items. So, um, Lorene has indicated to me that no one has signed up, but if there is somebody who would like to come forward to the mic um, who hasn't signed up, that is perfectly fine. So, this is the time, folks. Hello, Terry O is 40 Oakland Avenue. I just thought while I was sitting here, I would put in a correspondence just to say that the NK5K was held at the high school on September 10th. It was incredibly successful. I found out today that we raised a little over $14,000 to put towards programs in the middle school and the high school, with about 1,500 going towards a special memorial scholarship for one of our students, Marissa Hayward, who passed away a couple of years ago. So we were very, very happy and hope for that success next year. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. All right, I don't see anybody else coming forward, so we'll go ahead and move on. Um, our first item is, um, is our executive session for disclosure of executive session votes? Just one vote. Um, all members were present at the September 27th executive session of the school committee except Linda Avanzato and Larry Cerisi. Motion was made by Dick Welsh, seconded by Joe Thompson to adjourn executive session and go into open. Motion passed five to zero. Thank you. And then we have um, a motion to seal the executive session minutes. So do I have a motion to do that? So move. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Next we have um, superintendent's report. Yes, I have, I have three items for tonight. Uh, first, I want to mention that um, I'm very pleased to announce that um, as of uh, this weekend, we have sent out letters to parents about the, the student portal. Uh, parents and students got this, this information so that uh, this replaces what used to be called iParent. It is part of the Aspen system. Um, it is probably one of the pieces, it's definitely one of the pieces where there's a lot of data to um, be um, uploaded and so it takes a little while, but we are pleased that it is up. Uh, parents can use their students' passwords to uh, access this information. Um, I was able to do it with my own kids, so I know it's working. And I was pleased this morning at Davisville, there was a parent who was very pleased with uh, what she was able to discover going through this process. So it's out there, and I encourage parents to try it out, and um, if they have problems, to uh, certainly let us know. Um, the second piece, um, uh, Mr. Thompson talked a little bit about uh, Davisville Elementary. I was there this morning, and, uh, and I just want the community to know that we will be talking about Davisville Elementary, um, uh, and I will have a proposal for our committee on October 25th. Um, before that time, I plan on meeting with a number of people to, you know, kind of uh, frame my thoughts and, and to uh, put together some ideas about uh, future use of that building. And uh, so I just want people to know that that discussion will be coming very soon. I know a lot of people, particularly in the Davisville neighborhood, have been uh, asking about that. So I just want to start to get the word out there. And I will certainly include them in, um, in any correspondence I have and any planning I have before the school committee session and, and make sure there is time for uh, people from the community to give us some feedback on, on any plans that I would put forth. Um, I also want to mention, since it made uh, the newspaper, 
um, our uh, soccer program uh, this year because of a violation uh, on behalf of a, an assistant coach. Um, had a situation where uh, the coach was um, coaching some of the students from his own team during the summer. That is a violation of Rhode Island Interscholastic League rules and North Kingstown was listed at, to have a, a suspension for the head coach and the assistant coach, um, a, a fine of a couple hundred dollars and a, a three-year probation. Um, I just want everyone to know that while we certainly understand the fine and the suspensions and, and see that as, as appropriate, we do not feel the um, three-year probationary period is appropriate. We think it's a little excessive and we will be seeking to uh, appeal that piece. So we'll keep you posted on that part. But otherwise, uh, I just don't want the community to feel like all of our sports are shutting down or anything like that. This is purely a probationary kind of thing. All of our sports are still going strong, and uh, we don't see any future problems in this area in the future. So, uh, Dr. Jay, question, please. Yes. Mr. What Munch. year was this infraction? This this happened um, this past year. The um, the part of the probation was listed in regards because we have had a past infraction in 2005. 2005? Yes. So, so the, the probationary period was listed because this happened now, but the understanding was that we should have known better because something happened similar to this in North Kingstown back in 2005. We felt that since there was a different principal, a different a, uh, athletic director, and different coaches at that point, that uh, we felt that this was a little bit excessive right now. Okay, so, so this current one that we're, we're being... Uh, uh, being uh, penalized for <laughs> did occur this past fiscal year. Was it this summer, Dr. Kenworthy? So the uh, the current infraction that we're, we're you know we're dealing with now in the present would have happened in, in this past off season. So okay. it would have been a current coach that, that did that and you know clearly shouldn't have under the interscholastic rules. <coughs> As Dr. Ajay mentioned, uh, you know, fine, suspension, that, that's been the norm. But probation, they usually have only do for second or, or third offenses, that kind of thing. As we're trying to gather more information on, okay, when, when did this other offense take place, it seems to have happened, you know, many, many years ago, and none of those, those same people would even be here anymore. Yeah, I'm really glad that you're going forward with an appeal on this, <clears throat> especially in light of the fact that, you know, we're going back and holding something was on record some five or six years ago. You know, that seems like uh, holding vengeance for a long time, you know, where do you go? And especially after the article that was in the paper, uh, the sports uh, section by uh, Mr. Gologli, sports writer for the journal, who, you know, really took it, took it to, to the Rhode Island in, in Scholastic League regarding, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, suspension or fine, whatever, that they gave on, a, you know, Warwick, uh, Warwick's uh, program because they were – you know, letting them use the weight, you know, the weight classes for the kids from, you know, uh, one of the less, priv pri you know, privileged sections of the community. And it was a very compelling article that he wrote saying, you know, guys, you're kind of, you know, really looking at this the wrong way. And uh, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen as a result of that. But, I mean, if, if there's no <laughs> specific, you know, intent and so forth and so on to go back and then, uh, you know, uh, find us, especially – to my chagrin, is that, that our former principal is on the committee that sanctioned us. And I, I totally feel that that's inappropriate uh, uh, on his part. So uh, keep doing a good job, and uh, we'll get through this. Thank you. Mr. Thompson and then Mrs. Benson. I'm just thinking that if um, you're going to appeal the, um, the three-year probation, but at the same time um, maybe offer um, – something that you would be wanting to do anyway and say, you know, we're going, to for, we're going to do like an annual review of all rules and regulations at the beginning of the, the academic year mm -hmm. for all coaches. And, you know, this would be something you're planning to do anyway. But uh, just put that down as a, as a here's a possibility of what we'd like to do in order to meet the requirements of said probation. Just uh, see that to address Mr. Help. Thompson's point, um, one of the items that we are required to do is, is exactly that, um, Mr. Thompson, that um, besides 
you know, the, the um, suspension of, and fine and all that, one of the items is that we would um, put in writing for them our plan to continually communicate uh, this rule to our all of our coaches and and you know um, Mr. Uh, Marcello is all over that so that's already happening and it will continue to happen so Mrs. Benson I just wanted to um, say thank you and I certainly appreciate your openness in putting the issue out and as Dr. O.J. just stated you mentioned that in your article that they would be made aware of it. And I think that this is my opinion and not members of the committee. I don't think the people of the town appreciated them taking an anonymous call. Because usually if you can't put your name on something, it's not worth that much investigation. And thank you for being open. Your words in the journal that morning were very open. And you tend not to hide anything, as Dr. O.J. is saying. You did a good job. That's what it sums up to be in my book. Thank you. Dr. O.J., did you have anything else you wanted to report? Well, that's it for now. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. I have one, um, one item to clear up under item 3H9, where we list the intramural um, sports. It is listed that um, Marcia Sahagian is doing fall touch football at DMS, and that should be um, Saba Sinodi. So I'd like to just make that correction for the committee. And other than that, I am open to hearing exemptions. Mr. Thompson. Um, F2. Um, H6. H8. And I won. Mr. Welch. Uh, E1, H1, and H2. Mr. Welch, does that, um, Under E1, does that then mean all of A, B, C through F? Um, I only have one question. It's it's on just one part of it. Okay. Yeah. Just, just okay. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. I have Mr. questions Welch. on that E1 also, but it, okay. on comments on page 52, 53, and 54, I have a comment on each page. Um, could you so. give me the numbers specifically? You know, the, the letter and number would be helpful. Because that will help out with the with what we're approving and what we are exempting. Uh, it's uh, paragraph E1D. E1D. Okay. Well, E1 is already exempted. Okay. Is yeah. there something else? Yeah. It was e, I just want to make sure it's E1A, uh, C, and D. And uh, excuse me, E. Okay. So it's E1. Was there anything else? I had, uh, I'm sorry, somebody else told me that. The uh, minutes of the uh, uh, D1, page 40. Okay, D1. Was there anything else? Uh, no, everything else has been pretty much. Uh, very much covered. Oh, All right. I, no, that's fine. Thank you. Do I have a motion on the remainder of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. right. Just give me a moment here to check off what we have. <clears throat>
right. The first item. Mr. Mudge, approval of the work session minutes from September 19th, 2011. <clears throat> yes, uh, that's the item 7 on page 40. Of the, be more uh, specific. <laughs> And it would be D7. What page in the packet? In the packet, page 40. Page 40. What, do, what is your issue with the, Item the minutes? Item 7. Uh, I need some clarification on this because <clears throat> the title said that uh, the purpose of the meeting was to uh, authorize Dr. O'Shea and uh, Mr. Traper to negotiate with Jamestown regarding the Jamestown tuition rate and pension. And I don't believe that that was the case. And I think that that's further, further recognized uh, by the fact that uh, my motion in there uh, on page uh, 41 uh, suggested that Dr. Auger also uh, discuss the bond rate, which has been an issue, and also uh, for Jamestown paying a, their, their tuition rate based on fiscal year 13 expenditures and costs as opposed to fiscal year 11. So that's, that's a little con inconsistent, okay? And, uh, and I'm not sure what uh, Dr. Auger's uh, charge is. It seems like it's a little prohibitive because of the, the, the motion being, being, uh, being uh, uh, defeated. <coughs> so uh, I think we need to, to uh, take a peek at that again and rewrite that paragraph. If you look at the agenda, well, too, I, if you look at the I agenda. I don't know what, and I'm not going to try to speak as to <coughs> what was set here at the table without listening to it myself. So what I would state to the school committee, probably the best thing we have, we can ask um, Loreen to re-listen to exactly what was the motion that was made <coughs> and what was approved. And then if there is any change, she can let us all know at the next agenda meeting. And um, we can basically look and see if it was different. And if it wasn't different, then the minutes will come before us again, and we can vote to approve them. But right now, I, I don't think we can really have a discussion as to what was said, since we don't need to take up the time in the meeting to go back and watch the video ourselves. Mr. Thompson. Just curious as to whether we're going to have a report either in executive meeting or in open session from Dr. Auger on the um, Whatever. on what's happened or you know I mean could we add that to next the next agenda I don't if it involves negotiations maybe it should be an executive meeting but I would like to see it there I hear about it open session any any discussion of the Jamestown contract would be an open session uh, I, I do have it in mind to include it on the October 11th agenda thank you <laughs> yeah again Mike I just look at the title of what was on the agenda for that evening and it was just for Dr. O.J. to discuss the pension aspect of the, the contract, which I thought was prohibitive. Like I said, we can have Loreen. Um, we can. We don't have to approve the minutes tonight. We can have Loreen relook at the um, or listen to the video, and then come back to us and let us know as exactly what we voted on. Thank can you. I ask clarification? Are we talking about the amendment to the motion or the main motion? No, I, I, I am referring to the fact that the, the if you look at the if you would look at the agenda itself from the previous meeting, you will see that the and I think it's articulated in in your further in your right up here that the amendment was defeated, but the agenda said for Dr. O.J. to discuss the pension cost, and I read that to believe it was only the pension cost because any further discussion on anything else was basically rejected by the school committee when we, you know, I failed to approve the amendment. And I think, uh, I think uh, council would uh, comment on that too, because in fact, indeed, she said that uh, the, uh, the agenda clearly said just pension. All right. And we will have Lorraine report as to what we, what was, the motion we decided upon and what we voted on. And that will be what we have in the minutes. Not necessarily what was on the agenda, but what was voted on 
and what the decision was. All right. E1. Uh, Mr. Welch. Yeah, it really relates to the check register. Um, it, I don't know what happened. We, we used to get the check register alphabetically, and now we're getting it listed by dollars spent from a, a, a high number to a low number. Um, it doesn't really compute to me. We, for two years we had it um, arranged alphabetically so that we could look at a vendor and see how much money, money was being spent with a particular vendor. Um, you could focus in on what was going on in the, um, in the school department. Um, I don't know why this changed. I think it was an oversight on, on my part for this month. Okay. It, was, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a conscious change. Okay. Thank you. Then it didn't change. It just was an error. Okay. Thank you. Uh, make a motion to approve uh, item E1. Well, well we why don't we wait? Because we have Mr. Mudge exempted oh. a few things. So oh, okay. we'll go through his exemptions, and then we'll, then we'll make that motion, please. Okay. Okay, Mr. Mudge, you had, was it E1, was it A? Or was, I know it was C, D, and E, but was it A also? Or just? It was uh, C, D, and E. Okay. All right, so I, before we do that, how about can we approve items E, A, and B? An F. An F. Well, F would have already been approved because that would have been. Oh, you're right. Okay, and F. I'm sorry. A, B, and F. So moved. Second. All those in favor of approving D1, A, B, and F, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. I, I beg. Oh, we, we're back to D. We're not on E. I'm sorry. I, I missed now it. Now we are on D1. No, E. E. I'm sorry. Well, that's what yes, I think you said. You. I thought you said E, e so let's. one C, Mr. Mudge. What, what, what did you just, we just, she just said D. You what said did you D. just approve? I thought you meant E. I did meant you? E, 1, A, A, B, and F. Right. Yeah, so I, took it I think you said D. Okay. I correct that as to what I meant. Lorraine, did you know what I meant? E, right? I what you meant. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Do you okay. have that down? All right. All right, good. Okay. Good. And that's what everybody wrote on. Okay. Just to make now, it. Mr. Mudge. E1C. Yeah, on uh, E1C, uh, it says we have a revised budget of 58092000 uh, That budget is just uh, general fund monies, which include most of the state revenue we get in. But I, I would like to say that that really, that was the appropriated budget by the town council. I would like to see a budget that really reflects the fiscal year, you know, 2012 budget because obviously we're, we're spending a significant amount of additional funding. Uh, I'm told it's what, up to what, a million and a half dollars for this, this fiscal year. In other words, we're, our budget is in 58 million. We're going to spend 58 million plus Plus, uh, 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 for example, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, our surplus funds. So, are you asking for something for 2000 or FY 2012? This was the report that you have in front of you is for last year. 2011. Well, it's dated 2011, but I think it's a 2012 budget. Mm, I think then at the, um, the heading says that it was the budget, um, the year to date budget by function up through um, August 31st, 2011. It is FY12. It's FY12. It's, it's August 2011, but it's for the FY12. Yeah, we had to change that title on there too. So this is the, the fiscal, year, fiscal year 12 budget. Okay, that should be corrected up at the top. And you can see over where it says 4 2 12 02. That's, that's basically the, the second reporting for that period of time. So again, my, my point that I'm trying to make is, you know, from a, from a budget standpoint, we, we need to modify this to show that 
you know, this was an appropriated authority from the school department, and we're going to well exceed that from a budget standpoint, okay? And I'd like to know, you know, what that is at this point in time, because I think we're, we're committing, you know, to at least another million and a half dollars of expenditures. The, I, I'm not sure I understand, uh, Mr. Mudge, on, on the million and a half. Well, what we have said is, for example, for example, okay, uh, uh, negotiations, there may be some costs and things like that that we had budgeted for. If we don't get those costs, we're going to have to take that money out of the capital, excuse me, our, our, our fiscal year surplus. And you've already, we've already said we're down to what is a surplus after our expenditures. We've, we got $2.4 million at the beginning of fiscal year 11. Yeah. And we've already spent how much of that? Well, the school committee appropriated nearly $1.2 million. No, no, I, yeah, but when did they appropriate the I don't think the school committee ever appropriated $1.2 million. I don't recall that ever happening. As part of the fiscal year 12 budget process, one. $1,150,000 was appropriated towards fiscal year 12's operations. Could you, not tonight, you don't have to, could you, so it was how much, one point what? It was roughly $1,150,000. Okay, so I'd just, I just like to know, could you send me the, 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 some information, maybe I missed it, okay, that the school committee appropriated out of reserve another $1.2 which then means that this expenditure for this year Okay, we have to add another one million two hundred thousand dollars. The revenue source may be the school fund surplus, but our budget for the year is fifty-eight million right now, plus one point two million. No, the, the the fifty-eight million that you see for an expenditure was offset by that one point two million in revenue from fund balance. So that part of the bu that part of the budget balances. Your point relative to negotiations and to the added positions is correct. But we typically don't do a budget adjustment until late November, December time frame when we, when we have a clearer idea of where everybody's assigned, where the expenditures are going, and when we have more information on revenues from the state. The, the $58 million, <coughs> $58.092, isn't that the appropriated budget by the town council? Yes, that was done in, in June. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But that money did not include capital, I mean, uh, school fund surplus dollars, I believe. Y yes, it did. Okay. I'll check. Okay. And I'll get back to you, okay? All right. Okay. And the, how about on That's fine. That's e all my question. One or E1. Can I ask one thing, please? What? Yes, Mr. Johnson. Real quick. Uh, Mr. Draper? Yes. Do you have that sheet that I handed across to you in the executive? Is that handy to you right now? Because... It fits right into what we're talking about here. There was a question about two figures on this specific page. Yeah, there were two questions on there. One was about allocations, if I recall, and the other was about um, I giving it to the super. Okay, here we go. One was to be allocated. Uh, in the budget, it carries roughly $4 million in expenditures to be allocated. Those are allocated over the course of the year. Um, th that takes place over the course of the year. In the budget adjustment, we'll make some of those adjustments, the substantial ones that we know of. And then at the end of the fiscal year, that's done again. Um, for instance, some district-wide expenditures are, are maintenance. Maintenance expenditures, we don't know where we're going to spend those those resources until we get into the year and assigning the square footage and that sort of thing. Um, Davisville Elementary School, that's where we carried our, it says here, uh, Davisville Elementary, why is it showing negative? Uh, because that's where we carry our, our breakage number. And then same thing in the November, December time frame when we do our mid-year budget adjustment, that's when we shake out those estimates of breakage and then we adjust for where the staff are assigned. Uh, for instance, I, I know one of our elementary schools had a significant number of people that moved around in the job fair. Uh, I, I want to say Forest Park had a substantial change in, in um, assignments. When that happens and you have senior staff, say three or four senior teachers move to a, a different elementary 
um, that'll that'll adjust your numbers by maybe a couple hundred thousand. Thank so, you. So yeah, it's usually November, December time frame. These numbers will shake out. So, so you're 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 saying that on the Davisville Elementary, you're covering the breakage for the whole school system in that account. The, the closed Davisville Elementary. Yes, that's where we isolated it so we could find it. And, why wouldn't and Why wouldn't we it? have a separate identification for breakage someplace? UCOA doesn't provide for a breakage number. Oh, I'll look into that. But that it doesn't seem to me then then we're accounting for that correctly when we say it's an expenditure or something for Davisville Elementary School. We should well, the, the expenditures related to to the the school location because it's no longer an active school. It's no longer listed as an elementary school. Well, I understand, but that's not an expense towards that school. Right. Correct. I think we're getting a little bit off okay. the topic now. Right. If we could look at, um, yeah. so we, if we don't have any more Hawkins. questions on Hawkins. E one C, I'm looking oh. for a motion. Okay, uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor of approving E one C, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion passes. Okay, Mr. Mudge, you had a question on E. One D. Yes. Uh, in in there on the the uh, original uh, budget, okay. It says uh, original appropriation. Uh, if you go to the preceding page, you have an original appropriation of fifty eight million. I see a, a, a number that says zero in there. So my question is, is and I and I know these are grants and federal funds and state funds and some of these other uh, things. The issue is, is these are appropriated, these funds have not been appropriated by the council, have they? No, the CRP is not appropriated through the council process. But does, doesn't the, the town charter say that we're supposed to identify all our expenditures? And doesn't the town charter say that the town council is the only one that can accept the grants? I would ask you to check that out, please. I'm not going to get into it tonight. I think that the town council has a responsibility to appropriate these funds as well. Okay? All right. Is there a Thank motion you. to approve so E1D? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. E1D is approved. Mr. Mudge, you wanted to talk about E1E. E. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'd like this to bring to your attention that I think uh, that with this doesn't this budget report on athletics does not reflect the true, true cost of our athletic program. I think it's more in that neighborhood of about $500,000. And I think if we're going to put out a report that talks about athletics, we ought to have the full report uh, regarding the athletic expenditures uh, for the uh, town. We know it's well in, 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 in it's not $163,000. So I'd ask for that to be revised to include uh, all athletic functions throughout our district and cost. Mm -hmm. Isn't this a monthly budget? Yeah. No. Well, yeah, it doesn't include salary and benefits, but we can include salary and benefits. That's no problem. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if, if it's a budget report, we ought to report what the budget is, and I think the budget's around 500000 so in revised budget, the bottom line report total should be you know, as a budget, somewhere around five hundred thousand dollars. So, are you requesting a, a, a another report? In well, the next months? report. I mean, the next not, you don't have to do it this time, but the next report we ought to have. If we're going to, you know, call this the athletic report, we ought to report on all the athletics that fall under the UConn numbers for athletics. All right. So noted. Um, nope. I'm t looking for a motion on E one E. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Nope. Right, motion passes. All right, we now move on to F2, Mr. Thompson. I thought uh, I would just mention uh, any time a sole source comes up, I, I've asked in the past, and I'm going to continue to ask someone to explain uh, what the purchase is, why we're, why we're not doing it competitively, and uh, why it's a sole source. This um, sole source justification is in your packet, Mr. Thompson, and it lists this as a one-of-a-kind item. It's a highly specialized, research-based English language uh, materials. 
uh, ordered through the special ed department using our funds. Hey, do we have a motion? Thank you. Uh, I have a question on that, please. Mr. Mudge. Dr. Leger, I, I, I think I know what's happening here, but it, this goes to the root of the issue that I, I had before regarding the, the approval of, and the identification of all our uh, extra state aid funds that don't fall into the general fund category and all of the grants and so forth and so on. But with that, I'd like to say is, is we should be planning ahead. We, you know, when we come into the June or July time frame or even before that, we should know what this expenditure is, okay, before September. In other words, we should have budgeted, it should have been in our budget for fiscal year 12, you know, and, and because I didn't see it in the budget, okay, I asked the question then, do we have enough money in the budget? Okay. We have, we have what enough is money the budget in, in, in our ARA grant yeah. to cover? Yes. Yeah. But so. nobody is, the, the town hasn't appropriated those grants for us to spend. Let's not talk about it now, but we need to talk about it later, I think. But still, that if we had the ARA grant and we knew that was coming, why, why didn't we procure this back in early July? Why were we waiting until September? You know, if, it was, if we knew it was a requirement, uh, I, I don't I don't know whether this was um, what my assumption is there was a decision to make this purchase back uh, when the grant was written the purchase order only actually comes through at this point that's so and sometimes with grants um, you realize as the year is moving on that you're going to make some adjustments and that's acceptable within sure. the rules of the grant so you know, you're seeing this right now because this is when we're making the purchase. Great. I don't know Do how I else to explain it. I will move to accept. F2. Second. F2. All those in favor of approving F2, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. We're now moving on to H1. Mr. Welch. Yeah, it's just a, um, <clears throat> what I would ask just for clarification purposes. When we see that somebody is in personnel item is an approval for an appointment is getting a, a, a higher than a step one, um, if it's a shift from one job to another because they're already in that highest step, uh, if there was just a reasonable short explanation, um, it would help. But it just ordinarily uh, brings a question to my mind. Um, this. This one here that is a step 10 um, go, shift, second shift, it doesn't explain to me that, uh, quite frankly, that um, this person may be coming from another school or even in the same school and just shifting from, from the first shift to the second shift, which if that was the case, I don't even know why it's on here. Um, but uh, a, a lot of the, uh, the transfers that we make, um, for our own accounting purposes and audit purposes, we list them on these agendas. Um, and so uh, I know Mr. Mudge made a point about this in the past, about you know a simple transfer probably doesn't need, need to come for approval, but there, there's also a function within the agenda of having it on record that that <laughs> move was made. Um, um, my assumption here, and Mr. Draper can help me, um, I'm just assuming that you know uh, there's no one is, is advancing, I don't think you're suggesting this, but no one is advancing significantly in steps within a, a particular move. This has simply to do with their years of service. And so they're at this particular level. And so you're, you're learning at what level they're being paid. So it, it, to me, if, if it was just a transfer or a said transfer or something like that, yes. it would just remove the question. That's okay. all I'm saying. Okay. And to go further into the H2, um, we say when some we say when some personnel situation is budgeted, we don't say it's not non-budgeted, and so when you don't say it, do we automatically assume that it's not budgeted? That that has been the way this um, group has worked in the past. That's correct. Yeah, um, that's long before me. So I mean, I'm I'm assuming that your assumption is true. Thank yes. you. I make <coughs> make a motion. Uh, to may I comment on that, please. 
Yes. One uh, uh, this is yep. member. This is one member two, for, H1 for H1 questions. H one two. On H one, you've got B, C, and D. Now, it, in, in A, you say that that's budgeted. Now, with B, C, and D, uh, you know, are they full time employees, and, and and is that money budgeted, or are these new employees are just transfers again? If they are transfers, like Mr. Wells said, uh, uh, I don't even want them even on the agenda. Well, again, for for accounting and auditing purposes. There's a, there's a feeling from my staff that it needs to be on the agenda. Um, so uh, in the future, what we can do, Ned, we can list these as transfers right on the agenda, can't we? No, you yeah, to, to prepare us. Yeah. yeah. We, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll make sure the word transfer is listed. Yeah. So the, there is no extra cost in no. any of these other ones, because I noticed that the budget it no. wasn't in there again. Okay. And uh, uh, with respect to uh, item two that Mr. Uh, Welsh mentioned was the you know, the uh, item 2B, uh, I notice that there's no statement as to the budgeting of that. Is that? They're all budgeted. They're all budgeted? Yes. Okay, so these are budgeted positions. So yes. I think we have to really make that clear. Could, could, could we not have to assume that then? Could yes, we I, I agree sure. with that. Okay. Yeah. I agree with that. I have it stated, budgeted, non-budgeted, and then we know. Thank you. Do I have a motion on H1 and 2? I make that motion. Second. Okay, all those in favor of approving H1 and 2 say aye. 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 All those um, opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Thompson, H6. I'm going to kind of lump six and, uh, 6 and 8 together, and I had a couple of questions that I actually have gotten an answer, answers to, but I would like to have them kind of publicly expressed. Um, I, several questions come to me every time I see these on the on the sheet. One is why are the uh, prices all over the map, uh, and secondly would be having to do with several people have multiple uh, listings, in some cases quite a few listings, and I wonder about the equity of the situation. Are we making sure that all the teachers ha are given an open uh, shot at having some of this uh, this money, this little extra money that they get for doing these uh, after-school positions. If I can um, address that, um, I too have similar questions, Mr. Thompson. Um, I know that um, what I have learned is that a lot of this is handled through our contract process. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm concerned, for instance, about um, the way of going about having a, a science Olympiad team at the high school. And, and working within the structures that we've created in order to set up a compensation for an advisor um, within those rules. So there's some things that I need to, to learn about. But I, I also have talked with um, our union president about this issue, and, and she informed me that this has not been brought up for a number of contract cycles. And so they're anxious to do this as well. So, you know, um, hopefully I can do this sooner than that. Um, there is, uh, from what I understand, a, a perfectly legitimate process for applying for these jobs and, and the selection and that sort of thing handled by administration um, and, you know, f overseen, you know, with the help of the union to make sure everything is fair and all that. But um, the prices being all over the place is something that concerns me, too. You know, um, I, my sense of this is that over the years different things have been added and you know, and I'd like to I'd like to know myself how that's kind of overseen and what the justification is for a certain coach being so much money and another coach doing very similar work, maybe coming in very different. Mm -hmm. So that's something my, I'm, my, I, I'd like to look into. My sense I got from you was that uh, if if there were a teacher that wanted to do an after school program, but they were being uh, edged out by someone else who had multiple programs, that this would be brought up to the union and we would. We would hear about it sooner or later. We'd fix it somehow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy so, with that. Yeah, I, I just, you know, it's something that I need to learn a little bit more about myself, and I will get back to you on that. Okay. I move that we accept oh. six and eight. Comments. Oh, sorry. Please. Sorry. Mr. Mudge. Or actually, Mrs. Denton had her hand up, and then Mr. Mudge. Uh, my question was answered because this has come up in the past, and why you have multiple names some of the many of the faculties in the schools don't participate in these they don't even put in for them so you have one person 
who is adept at working with the children and been doing this. So that's why you see multiple names that was brought up about a year and a half ago concerning this, maybe two years ago. So what we'll have to do is motivate other teachers who haven't participated in these programs to participate. Yes. Yep. And I will say that there for multiple time periods, you have things that are here for fall, you have things that are here for winter, and you have things that are here for spring. So if you see one teacher's name three times because it's at a different time period, I do believe we did negotiate this at the last um, – we negotiated one of the, the times that we had a contract, but I can't remember if it was just the past contract or the contract before that where we um, – Just speak out, please. I said I don't remember which contract, if it was the one we just did with the teachers or it was the one prior to that where we renegotiated all of the so. – um, the compensation for clubs and advisories. It had to be the one before I was, it was the one okay. before. did not do it this past It was All the right. one before. All right. Mr. Mudge. I might have a general comment for six, seven, six, eight, and nine, basically. Uh, Nine's been approved. Six, uh, with regard to six, and here's my question in general, which I, I, I continue to make, is you say that this is a, a grant-funded program. But could somebody tell me how much money is being spent here in total on six? I see a lot of numbers. I don't know if people are working six hours, 50 hours, 100 hours. You know, we ought to have some sort of a, you know, a, a, if we're approving something, an idea, an idea of how much money we're approving. And, and, you know, it's really not artic articulated there. So I'd like to see in the future, I want to support these, okay, that when we come in with something like this, we have a total number of how much we're spending on, you know, these facilitators or we're spending for intramural athletics and, and so forth. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll work on that. Thank All right. You. Um, Move we accept six and eight. Second. All right. All those in favor of approving H, six and eight, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Thompson, aye. One. The memorandum oh, I want. Yes. Um, I had a question about the uh, memorandum of agreement. Uh, has this been, is this complete and negotiated? Are we, are we voting to send this into negotiations? No, it's been, it was negotiated with the, between the superintendent and Correct. the president of the union, and then the NEA sent it over to me last week for Dr. Dr. OJ's approval. Correct. It's all done. You're just, you're agreeing to it tonight. Well, I've got a down on four, paragraph four, I think you meant the work days. I don't think you meant the work hours. And in paragraph one, uh, you have the dean working exclusively on such and such, and then you have some other things they're working on. And it seems like you could have put in other related duty, duties as assigned, uh, which is kind of a standard paragraph. And then over on uh, five, which is the top line on page 89. Can you hold on a minute? I'm trying, I'm trying to find it. Yeah. Uh, page, I'm sorry, page 88. Page 88 of the packet? Yes. Okay. I'm going there. Okay, can you give me those numbers again? I'm the, sorry. The items? Uh, sorry about that. Okay, number one, uh, you have the word exclusively. Yes. And then it goes on to mention other things. Um, well, what, what, what the exclusively means is that this is, is exclusively student discipline. It has nothing to do with adult discipline, like an administrator would deal with adult discipline. Deans deal with student discipline. And that's a, a fine point because um, in the school culture, when an assistant principal would show up at your door to, to deal with an issue, um, that person oversees everybody in the building, staff and students. A dean oversees students. So if there's, a, if there's a conflict that involves an adult, that would be handled by an administrator, not a dean. And then I would, um, kind of a common uh, theme in some of these types of agreements is other related duties mm -hmm. as assigned. Yes. Which would avoid having to, every time you decide, it looks to me like every time you decide you want to have them do something else which is related but not exactly specified, you have to go back and go through a whole negotiation process. Well, that, that's if, if that's you're going to add anything significant to this. And, and that's kind of a standard item. This is, 
this is something that is not in the, uh, the teacher contract at the moment. So this is a new position being crea created. And what this document does is it just kind of sets the boundaries for this so that people understand what it includes and, and, and what it doesn't include. And the item in there about um, you know, any changes or additions um, are subject to mutual agreement. It's something that we'd have to come together on and say, you know, we, we want to uh, add this responsibility onto the, the job. That would be something that, you know, the administration wouldn't do unilaterally. And that's part of just about any kind of, you know, contract agreement. Would, would, would there be a problem if we just uh, waited on this um, for like one meeting so that there's just some, some little things in here that uh, some of them are even just grammatical changes that I would have liked to have seen this before before actually having to vote on it. Make a motion. I'll second. I'll make a motion. No, no, but I'd like to just find out. Is, is it, oh, would um, it be a problem if we put it off for one meeting? You've already got the people in the position. Yeah, I understand that. That's fine. So I, 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 off the top of my head, I, I don't see a problem waiting two weeks. So but I, I, I don't have any substantive changes yeah. to this. Just little things. Okay. Oh, if we're going to put them off, I'll save my comments okay. to you some other time. You could, if you could, e email me mm -hmm. your comments. And yep. That way, I can yep. make sure that you know I can check with. Um, Thank you. Thank the you. Union Thank and you. everything. Any adjustments? Sure. Do we need to vote to table it? Yes, probably. Yes. Make a motion to table this until the second meeting. All right. All those in, in favor of tabling H, I mean, I'm sorry, I1, say yes. aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Okay, motion passes. All right. We are now at the end of the consent agenda. And we are on to the school budget. I, I would remind everybody that it would be helpful if you had um, things that you wanted to change that you could talk to the superintendent ahead of time so we could have made those changes. Oh. Yeah. I don't think Madam we... Chair? Yes. Did, 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 did we take action on uh, I-2 or did I fall asleep? That was already approved. Yes. It, it was well, approved? Wasn't, it wasn't exempted from It was exam. not exempted. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Oje, 2011-2012. I, I have nothing to add on, on the current budget. Okay. 2012 and, and the 2012-13, um, I just wanted to make it a point to announce that we will be having a joint meeting with the town council. The date on that, Mrs. Page, is? October 17th. Uh, October 17th. So uh, there will be a lot of details coming forth uh, regarding uh, the implications of uh, the upcoming school year budget at that time. Um, and there's there's a lot to come, but right now I, I don't have uh, anything further to add. I don't know if Mr. Draper has anything to add at this time. Yet. Okay, we're, we're all set for now on that. Mr. Welch. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it's important to me that um, we make as many people aware of this meeting with the town council um, because of the budget situation that we're we're being faced with both the, t the town and the school department. The, and I would like to suggest that our staff be made aware through uh, uh, our methods of communication uh, and maybe even the listserv to the parents. Um, we're faced with an enormous budget problem and uh, going forward, and I think that we should make every effort to make people aware of it so that when it comes down to cut time, uh, when we finally know what our budget is going to be, people aren't sitting there surprised at the finances of this community. I think that's an excellent idea. Thank you. 6, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. At the Beechwood. <coughs> Mr. Thompson and then Mr. Mudge. Um, just an, another indication to the public that uh, the public is welcome to attend the budget subcommittee meetings of the school committee and that the next one is October 4th at 11 a.m. in the administration building. Mr. Mudge. Uh, I'd just like to point out that uh, to the budget committee as well as the Dr. Oje is, is that I'm very concerned about uh, the compliance of our school budget and I have been in the past with our Rhode Island general law and the town charter. And I think we need to address those issues, you know, especially in looking at the East Greenwich uh, budget this year. For example, 
uh, by November 1st, we're required to have a three-year plan in, in with the town council. So I think we really need to to look at, you know, what 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 needs to be in the budget, what, what do we need to have in it to be compliant with the state law as well as the town charter. So I, I wish you'd look at that uh, those issues too, and I'll work with you, Dr. O'Shea, and point out the, my concerns uh, separately. Thank you. Okay. Benson. Um, <clears throat> Dr. O'Shea, would those be available for members at the budget committee meeting next week? to get the date straight and if we're going to have a campaign to get the parents out would would what be available uh the dates referring to when the budget is due um i can i can put together a, a calendar to that effect okay, okay. thank you very much sure. uh -huh. and then we'll be able to disseminate it at that meeting Dr. Uge. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about the CIP existing for oh, future um, Oh, yes. Um, actually, I'm going to pass this on to Ned, but this is the, um, the um, money that I mentioned last time uh, from the $9 million bond being used to uh, help us fund the DMS group. Can, Ned, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, could I get a clarification? Are we looking for a a vote on this tonight, or is this all for information? For a vote. So you're looking at a vote on number one or um, number two, number three? Uh, for a vote specifically on 4C1, which would be a recommendation from the school committee or, or a formal request from the school committee to the town council to reassign the $2 million, roughly $2 million in remaining bond funds for use at the DMS roof. I'll make motion to, uh, Second. to uh, forward that on to the council. All right, so that's a good place to start a discussion. So, uh, Mr. Draper, why don't you and, and tell us about that? <clears throat> yes, what, what happened is, uh, as, as the committee is aware, we engaged SMMA, Sims, Maine, McKee, to perform a detailed study throughout the entire district on our facilities needs. Uh, that was consistent with what Ride required us to do to update our capital planning. When they completed that study, one of the areas they identified was the Davisville Middle Roof, which was, was also an area that we knew was a problem. Um, once they completed their work, uh, it was concurrent with the Rhode Island Legislature doing a moratorium on construction for the all educational facilities. So what we did over the past uh, month or so is met with the town manager, met with SMMA, and said, all right, you know, what, what is our alternative strategy since, since our original plan to, to work on a larger scale bond and a larger scale financing is not coming together? Uh, town manager said he would check with bond council and see if we could take the remaining $2 million of the $9 million bond that was approved by voters in 2004 and as you can see from the documentation, the, the reply back was that we would be eligible to use those bond funds. Uh, town manager also advised us that a formal request would need to come from the school committee to the town council requesting that action. Uh, and then the town council can make, a, make an action from there. All right, Mr. Mudge. Uh, how, how's that estimate? Is that, is, that a, is that a conservative estimate? Or and the reason I'm asking that for if we go for two million dollars and they give us that, uh, uh, are we constrained to just the roof, or will there be some monies left over for other things? Okay, uh, so we we to look at that, and, and also, and this this is one of these issues that fall into the comment that I made at the last meeting about having something ready. If we get extra uh, uh, funds coming in because of what, you know, what's going on in Washington, this would be a, a, a nice project to do that. But uh, third, I would, uh, are we confident that the Department of Ed will give us a 30 percent uh, discount on this? I, cu I couldn't say. I can't speak for the Board of Regents. I, they're, oh, they're, so it, it hasn't been submitted to them? It's been submitted to RIDE. It has not gone before the Board of Regents for approval. And so far, has RIDE signed up for it? 
In my last conversation with Joe DeSilva of Ride, he, he didn't have any problem with our application. But, you know, that remains to be seen. It depends on what, what type of advice the legislature gives Ride and how they're going to interpret the moratorium. Um, and this keeps changing and, and keeps being updated. Matter of fact, the superintendent just signed an updated form to Ride saying here's our request for roughly $6 million in improvements, which meets the health and safety guideline that Ride is going by. Um, but, you know, it'll then need to go to Board of Regents for their approval, and then, you know, will, will the funding come from the state? I'm, I'm not sure on that. So, so it, if we don't get state aid, then we're going to have to pay the whole bullet, you know, on our part. So my question might be, Okay, and I fully support getting the roof fixed. There's no question about that. Is you know maybe we we have to delay this, okay, until we get to 30 percent. I mean that's significant, and or until we possibly could get uh, supplemental funding, you know, that they're talking about in Washington. So this is one we need to do, but it, the timing I think is kind of critical on this thing to make sure we minimize we minimize what uh, what, what what we're paying there. But uh, well, he's, he's you taking know, the first step anyway. Yes, I, 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 under I understand your concerns, Mr. Mudge. But um, this is an opportunity that I think is something that we need to set in motion right now. I mean, this could take a while to get this approval. No, I agree. And, I agree. and the money is there, and it's available for these, and it's been approved for these kinds of reasons. You know, so. Um, if those other things can happen, that would be really nice. But I think I would certainly recommend going forward with this right now. Yeah, I, I yeah. do. I'm just yeah. kind of wondering the timing could be we could mm -hmm. we have the approval, we could do it next year or the, or the year after, too. Well, okay. I, 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 I'd just be worried about that roof. Yeah. <laughs> well, $600,000 is a big saving if we can get it, though, you know. That's all I'm trying to suggest. Mm -hmm. We have Mr. Thompson and Mr. Welch. I think uh, sometimes we uh, drive into these schools so many times that we, and, and, and we're so used to doing it that we, we don't see stuff that's right in front of our eyes. And I've been uh, mentioned this before, and I'm just going to bring it up now because we're going to take care of a roofing project at, at DMS, which is critical and safety. Uh, but at the same time, there is a uh, curbing all the way around on the entrance to DMS that is astonishingly in bad condition and uh, anyone who comes in to, to inspect our school from uh, from ride for example that's the first thing they're going to see we, we may not notice it but they will and it just it just makes the whole school look like we don't care and that we don't we're not taking care of it I, I also I drove down to Wickford Middle School and it's fine it's all the way around it's fine but for some reason and uh, I tried talking to uh, uh, the transportation manager to see if I could figure out what's the what's the difference what's causing this but if there's some way that we can put into one of these priorities I guess we're talking about packet page 102 the replace the roofing FY 12 it's priority one mm -hmm. and um, if there's any extra money in that I don't know how much it would cost to uh, to upgrade that uh, that curbing when you come into well, DMS, but, but part, it, it part sure of the, looks bad. Part of the reason it is priority one, and and part of the reason that it's eligible for this particular bond request is that it's a major safety concern. Safety. So I, I don't know if adding the curbing. I agree with you; it's unsightly, and it's probably something we should be addressing, you know, as soon as we can. But this particular item gets on the list because it's a major safety item, and and it's yeah. it's in really this roof is in really bad shape, and you know so. Uh, the recommendation from from the people who have inspected this for us is you got to take care of this right away. Yep. So that's why it applies here. Mr. Welch. Yes, a um, couple of things. Um, this is a, a summer um, 2012 project. So realistically, this, Mr. Much. Yes, sir. I'm trying to address one of your concerns. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> this is a summer 2012 project. Because of the right. the problems that we had at Hamilton with the replacement of the roof, so <clears throat> nothing's going to happen till then. Um, and I think the 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 subject on the uh, ride approval is life safety uh, and, and roofing 
are probably primary, and this was all part of the phase two requests that we have in front of uh, of Ride for over a year now. Yeah, I have no problem with this. No, I, you know. I, 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 I'd be surprised if they found an excuse not to, to True. do this. It's not just the timing that I'm concerned about whether we can get we, that 30 percent or not. I think we carried roughly $30,000 in this budget for miscellaneous repairs to get us through till summer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to patch and, and whatnot because it's, it, we know it's, we knew it was on the end of its, yeah. its list there. Um, a concern that I have, uh, and I, I expressed this before and it hasn't gone away, is um, the, the cost for the specifications for the roof replacement. As you remember, uh, back a couple of years ago when we started talking about replacing this roof, uh, Dean Lenato had put in a bid for about, <coughs> excuse me, $25,000, and I objected to that. Um, and I will object to it again if SMNA or anyone else comes in with that kind of a number. Um, we have to, and I know I'm speaking to the choir, but we have to be extremely frivolous on where we spend our money. Um, in order fiscal, you mean fiscal, you don't mean frivolous, Not right? frivolous. <laughs> frugal. Yes. Frugal. frugal. Frugal, I'm sorry. Frugal. Okay. Yeah. Just, just wanted to check there. That uh, wasn't the normal thing I hear out of your, your mouth, Mr. Yes, Wells. Yes, exactly. So. Um, and I, I would hope that we get uh, Facilities Management Committee uh, extremely involved in this. I think the, the, the dollar amount in, that's left in the bond is more than sufficient to do the work on the re roof, from what I understand. Um, and I just wouldn't want to see it, um, and I'm not accusing anybody of doing it, but I certainly wouldn't want to see it spent just because it's there. All right. We have a motion on the floor in a second. Um, let's go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor of approving the bond request of, um, to go to the town council um, for the DMS roof, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The okay, motion passes. Okay. I guess that brings us to policies. Am I correct? There's nothing more under CIP. Uh, um, you also have to do C2 and C3. Oh, okay. All right. Then let's do those. Okay. Um, go ahead and tell us about C2. Um, C2 is the superintendent's recommended capital improvement plan. <clears throat> it's consistent with the um, Sims Main McKee study and the results of that. Uh, that'll be the capital budget insertion in the in the fiscal year 13 budget. Uh, it's typically around the time of year that we've done this each year. Um, it's a little different in that because of the the ride requirements and the changes they made. We we had one plan a few months ago. Once the moratorium kicked in, we had to modify our plan based on the health and safety and um, other restrictions. We we whittled it down to roughly six million and a high priority need, but then there's the longer term needs that, that are, are still closer to the 18 million. Uh, that said, this is the uh, updated CIP. Um, at the end of that is also a list of priorities for the projects and the anticipated number of fiscal years it will go to. All right, I'm looking for a motion on four C2, and then we can have more discussion. So, so moved. Second. All right. So we have a motion to approve the FY13 capital improvement plan. Um, no discussion. I'd like to no, go ahead. Mr. Mudge, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I would like to. Uh, you say the fiscal year 13 CIP plan. I guess we, well, I'm, I'm looking for what we want to go forward with to the town council for construction monies for fiscal year 13. Now, we, we just, okay, you, you see this. A plan's a plan. It, str it strings itself out over, you know, several years, and as you, you have in here, your submission pages and so forth and so on. But I'm, I'm looking for, and I'll be honest, I, I didn't complete my review of this, but I, I want to know, you know, 
what what are we going to send and commit to right now in our budget to the town council for fiscal year 13 for capital improvement monies we're or bond monies for that matter see if you go, if you go to page looking for the page 102 okay we basically already have you know bought that we just you see any of your top number one priority on page 102? It's in the packet. I'm looking for the... Um, uh, and then these other ones you have, 12 to 14, blah, 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 blah. But we, we need a number. We need to agree on a number, a specific number. It's, it's in the That we're going to send to the council. And I might have missed it, okay? Uh, in addition to our school budget, okay? A normal school budget because unfortunately in the past these have been separated uh, but actually they they really one school well am I reading the chart right where it says and I, I apologize if I'm jumping in but I'm, I'm looking at the chart and I don't have a page but when you look at it, it talks about for 2012 that the authorized bond is the 1950 the unauthorized bond is 179 828 capital reserve fund is 150 and then there's that that's it that there's a total of two million two hundred seventy nine it's and then for 13 the same thing it, it, yeah in, in your packet it's listed as page this yeah I see what this. happened the paper version just got the sum yeah, page one of two. It, in in the digital version of what's been submitted in IQM 2 there's a spreadsheet that spreadsheet contains. Another page. On page 102. So it's it's item two. Or C two B. C two B. Right. Page 102. That's yeah, what I referred to. See, that's only just one page. It doesn't have the whole package. Spreadsheet. If if you're if you're looking on IQM two, see that you only have the summary. On the on the paper version, yeah, you can. on the digital version, it has the spreadsheet that contains all the detail. Mm -hmm. That detail, for what it's worth, that detail corresponds directly to the SMMA report, which is even more detailed. Yeah, but again, so so it's to, to your point, Mr. Mudge, you're looking for a summary of what the value is for the entire CIP and FY13. Well, no, I, I that, just want to know, not the value. That's all I want to know. What are the projects and the that's total amount that we're going to send to the town council requesting money that's that's in your packet all the detail I, I, they don't could you tell me what pet pet page that's on pages is it point 13 yeah it, it's I'd have to look at the pages that are here in your yeah packet. that's what is it help 95 me? and 96 yeah because I might have missed this capital improvement project by school well it says on Pages oh, 109 oh. okay. through 137 contain, contain listings of each each project. Now, relative yeah. to to the fiscal year spending, that is in the in the digital version, and that's something I'll, I'll send you the file as well. But the detail for all the projects is listed here. Yeah, but we, we haven't, nothing shows us in here what we're going to request for 2013 budget. 101. The 2013 budget is 4,630,798. That's what we're going to request for the council for? Correct. And what, could you help me with what page that's on, please? Cause I, I, I don't see it here in the paper packet. Okay, good. I, I'd like to spreadsheet in the packet. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll email a spreadsheet right now. Yeah, I, I'd like to uh, I'd like to hold that in abeyance. So then, okay. Well, okay, so you can vote against that. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, it, it is the sort of thing if we've been provided with the the spreadsheet of what we want, to, what what is to be done. But we just. See, I'm trying to focus it on, it's a plan. I'll approve the plan. It's not a big deal. But what are we going to, what are we, what's our specific submittal requirement for fiscal year 13? Fiscal 13. Okay. And, and, 
And I'm not sure I agree with that or not agree with that. But certainly the information isn't here in the package. We're, we're going to gonna email that to you, Mr. Mudge, and yeah. we, can, we can keep it on the agenda for next time yeah. if you have follow-up questions. Sure. Thank you. You're going to give that to all of us, right? Sure. Yeah. It's, it, it's in, in the digital version. That spreadsheet is there. Mm -hmm. So that, that detailed information, and it also corresponds to the SMMA report. But I'll email everybody the sheet right now. Yeah, because that, that sheet we want to vote on because I think as part of a submission to the council, we'll on a, whenever that submission is due, we're going to have to include that in that submission. Right. We do have a motion on the table to um, approve the FY13 capital improvement plan. Do we have a number? Do we have a, a bottom line number that we're approving? Well, it's four million six hundred thirty thousand, but it's the entire plan. Four million six hundred thirty thousand. To Mr. Mudge's question about FY thirteen, yes, that's that's the number. But this is the total. This is the CIP it. number for fiscal thirteen we're voting on right now. No, no. You, you, what we're asking for is authorization for the plan. You're not necessarily voting well, on that number. You're voting on the plan. Accepting the plan. All right. Are there further questions um, before we vote? I have one. Mrs. Benson. Is the number included in the plan? I don't see a number. Yes. Okay, so that answers Mr. Munch. Well, no, no, it isn't. That's, isn't. Uh, you're, you're, you're basically voting on page, what's on page 102, as the, yep. the summary of requirements that extend to 2000 and Sixteen. You know, 16. Correct. Okay. That's not an approval of any specific item for Im implementation at this time. And then we need to go back and yep. you know, approve a, a, a definite project request for a budget submission to the council. All right. Are there any further questions? One. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Um, in the first three on the list, priorities one, two, and three, it says funded yes. The rest all say funded no. So when we vote to send this plan forward, we're, we're assuming that we're voting yes to those three numbers and no to the rest? No, no. The, the, the reason it says no to the funding is I can't identify a funding source based on where we are right now, either by virtue of bond appropriations, uh, funds on hand, or, or um, ride authorizations. Where have you identified the funding source for the first three? That that's we also in the spreadsheet. But yeah, see, that's my point. We have it. Right, but that's why we're that's what we're going to do. Plan. Yeah, yeah. We're sending the plan yeah. to the right. town council. Time I'm ready to vote. We don't have. Uh, we don't know where <laughs> we're going to be getting the funds. Gotcha. But this would be our plan if, gotcha. if we had funds. Yep. This is where we'd spend them. Okay. Thank you. But then we need to follow up with a specific requirement in our budget submittal for 13. Mm -hmm. yeah, Go for it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Are we ready to vote on, yes. the, on the plan? Okay. All those in favor of approving FY13 capital improvement plan, say aye. Aye. Say aye. All those opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, Four, C3, Ride Board of Regents construction submission. Um, this is along the same lines as, as all we've just been discussing, which is of the moratorium and the health and safety items, SMMA delivered a final tally for those items. Uh, this is also consistent with what was reviewed by the facility subcommittee for the near term, next couple fiscal years, projects that uh, we want to focus on. Uh, this, this is the submission that was uh, filed with RIDE. Uh, they require that both an architect and the superintendent sign off on that as, as immediate needs. And, and to Mr. Mudge's point, this is to achieve that 30 percent reimbursement rate. All right. So is there a motion um, for to approve the Ride Board of Regents construction submission? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. So there's been a motion on the floor and a second. Let's, question. Is there more discussion? Discussion. Mr. Thompson. Um, on page, uh, packet page 179, there is a paragraph relating to telephone service. And I was concerned to make sure that that paragraph, I'll give you a chance to find it, it's, it's packet 179, it's uh, page 39, 
of the CIMA report, and it's paragraph D5030.02, telephone service. And we're also in receipt. <coughs> that, that, this packet gives uh, specifications, architectural specifications for telephone service um, in the Wickford Middle School edition. At the same time, we're in receipt of a uh, information technology assessment report of September 13th. And I believe that there's a uh, committee meeting on that one on the 28th of September at 4 o'clock. If I'm not mistaken, my question is: Are some of the recommendations that are made in this 99-page um, report from Elert regarding telephones has that been coordinated already with the um, the CIMA architects? Have the CIMA architects are are these two things combined together? Have they been no, coordinated no. together? They're they're not combined together. Um, there may be some overlap in that what what this is specifically referring to is moving a telephone equipment room because where they're designing the space it's going to require that you're going to have to move that telephone equipment out of the way so to the degree eLert is saying you need to upgrade your equipment room that would be a good time to invest in the new IT equipment and put it in this new space However, this is calling for a new space and moving the equipment that's there. Well, before I vote yes on this, I just I wanted to know that that this report or this specifications was going to somehow be overlapped with the, the report, which they, they, we haven't they, even approved yet. Yeah, we they, haven't even looked at right. it yet. They, they, they can work together. Yeah. They, these, are, these are concerns about safety only. The eLert report is obviously about, you know, upgrades in technology and all that sort of thing. This is making sure that no matter what we have for telephone service, that this particular room to house this equipment is done safely. So it's, it's purely safety concerns. That's what this, again, uh, the whole theme of these last three items is, is significant and imminent uh, problems concerning safety, and that's where, where all this is headed. So. But, but the one would not cancel out the other. So they could work together. Thank you. Mr. Welch. Um, I just wanted to correct something. I believe, Ned, um, you said 30 percent. Um, have they changed that back from the 40 percent? My, my understanding was that the legislation did change the reimbursement rate back to the old 30 percent. That was one of they still don't get it. Yeah. That was one of the changes. Yeah. They still don't even get it at all. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Welch. I mean, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Thompson. I mean, Mr. Mudge, I'm looking at you and I'm saying all the other names. Uh, you know, I, I haven't, I can't, and I apologize. I haven't really looked at this thing that closely, and, I, and, I, and uh, so I apologize for that. But, you know, I, I then in this, uh, familiar with this business and design a little bit. And uh, I would like to see this report before it's approved uh, go to the fire, fire department because I know in the past we've done things that we didn't have to do and they were not safety items, okay? And, and there's, there's one thing to refurbish an area if we need to refurbish an area. I don't have a problem with that. But to say that everything in here is a safety-related item uh, I, I just don't, quite frankly, concur with that statement, okay? And what we need to really do is come up with a list that tells us what are our critical safety items. I'm, and I mean certified because we know the, the fire department inspects our schools every year, and they have a list that they have of critical safety items, whether it's the fire alarm system working incorrectly, whether it's, you know, cords and plugs and this and that. The fairly, you know, fairly decent, you know, assessment. So, I would send, I would ask that this be sent to the fire department uh, for their review and comments, and we really clarify and scrub this thing for safety items, vice refurbishment, because they're two different issues. They're critical safety items. Whether somebody's tripping, I fall downstairs, I need a lot, you know, I need a handrail and things like that. Those we must fix. We, we must fix those. The others, we have some time and 
ability to choose when we want to do them. So we need to separate the wheat from the chaff. And to be honest, I, I don't think that this, this, you know, lives up to that uh, recommendation. Mr. Welch. Uh, Bill, the Facilities Management Committee at length went over the, re the report that you're referring to, which was done by SMMA for the Phase two submission uh, approval. And I can tell you that um, <clears throat> they cut out of the situation um, close to $6 million out of what they thought, what the architect felt we needed to do. I can also tell you that they're not done with the SMMA uh, document um, because we're, we've been waiting for the situation to get clarified with RIDE as to the approval of the submission, as to what SMMA thought should be done and how it should, how they thought it should be done. Now, <clears throat> um, one of the things that came out of the um, out of RIDE's review of it was the architect had proposed an addition to Wickford Middle School, and RIDE said. Uh, they can't justify it. So it's kind of a document that's in in process, if you will. Mm -hmm. And all of this, once we get an approval from RIDE for something, uh, that will be the time probably when facilities will go back into look at this and carve it up some more because it's going to have to go before the public once it gets um, submitted by RIDE for approval to the voters. Uh, and we have to do that by state law within six months of when uh, RIDE actually approves our funding request. That's, you know, I, I appreciate that process and thank you for your comments. But, you know, I, uh, I took when I look at some of these things and I look at safety, you know, floor retile the kitchen floor, you know, repair, patch, you know, for instance, uh, you know, uh, finishes on the uh, new mechanical uh, installations and things like that. So, you know, those things, there's a, this is the critical things that we need to do, whether it's a, an ADA item, which we are mandated to do, and then there are some choices that if you don't do this year, you can do next year. And that's what I'm really trying to, you know, to focus on, I, is the critical issues that we have to do. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Mr. Mudge, but, you know, my thinking is that, you know, that's what we pay SMMA to do, to look at these things and, you know, they're the experts on these kinds of issues. They're telling us that these items are major safety issues um, and that they certainly fit into, you know, this whole process of, of putting together a CIP and, and possibly, you know, going to a bond over something like this and, and making recommendations. You know, they looked at, at all of the schools and identified those five schools and these projects as, you know, imminent safety issues. And, you know, I, I don't know um, those issues myself. We all don't know, but SMMA does know. And, and if what they, what, and the oversight for them, we have the facilities uh, subcommittee to look at them, uh, you know, with very knowledgeable people there. So I, I feel confident that, that this is a, a good proposal and, uh, you know, ready to put it forward. I agree with Dr. that, that um, you know, as part of it is we bring forth these committees to make sure that that the things that we ourselves cannot do, we have others who are the experts to do. And while I may not be an expert in this area, that's why I rely on this committee and the work that they do. And so, therefore, I'm going to take a look at this report and give it a lot of authority that I myself do not have. Um, all right. I believe everybody Comment, except please. for Mrs. Benson has spoken. Mrs. Benson, did you want to say anything? No, I do not. Great. Mrs. Uh, Chair. But I would like do you to have a question? Because I'd just like to respond to, to Dr. Dr. J. Dr. J. I, I was the head of the military construction project office for the Naval Undersea Warfare Center going to Washington to uh, build buildings and get dollars and everything else. And I can assure you I know the difference between safety and non-safety. Mm -hmm. There are some nice things to have. Several years ago, we put out a ten nine million dollar $9 million bond. And in there it said we need to, we need it. It was a safety item. We needed to put sprinkler systems in three schools. It cost us a couple million dollars. In fact, the fire marshal told me 
that he told the architect at the time they were not safety items. Yet we went ahead and did that. So I have I look at this as, a, as an issue that you may have confidence in this, the SNAA, as Mr. Welch said, they've already chopped a lot of things off of this. But uh, I can assure you that we do not have $6 million of safety items in here, and it needs to be scrubbed. And we need to look at it. What are the critical items we need to do in fiscal year 13? We have critical safety items. The difference between a wannabe and a critical safety item that needs to be done. And that plan doesn't distinguish this. And I hope that Mr. Welsh is saying it's going to continue to do that. All right. We have a motion on the floor in a second. Thank you, Mr. It is now time to take the vote. Um, Lorraine, could you take a roll call vote, please? Sure. Melvoy Benson. Staying. William Mudge. I, I am going to uh, I just change my mind. I'm going to uh, approve this for the process, as Mr. Wells has just said, and we can ferret out these issues. Uh, we're not spending money at this time, but we can certainly ferret that out in the future. So I'm going to vote. Uh, I'm going to vote to uh, to let the process play out a little bit farther. So yes. Okay, Kimberly Page. Yes. Joe Thompson. I'm just uh, I'm going to vote yes, and I'm hoping that this does not e end up in having to be another bond type of issue that we've had several uh, problems with in the past, but yes. And Richard Welsh. Yes. Okay, motion passes. All right. Four, zero. <clears throat> I've had a request from the superintendent that we go to item 4E. So we'll go there now, and Dr. Roger, why don't Thank you... you. Uh, this, this is item is something that you asked me to bring forward to you. I have um, made some uh, amendments, uh, some adjustments to the assistant superintendent for teaching and learning position, um, and I have um, uh, made it a point to emphasize the technology uh, oversight that um, this person would provide, um, and I also am recommending here that uh, a salary range um, of $114,000 to $119,000 that acknowledges that um, the next highest paid administrator is at 113 and this administrator would actually help to oversee that administrator. So I think it's appropriate that someone with uh, the word superintendent in their job title um, have this salary range. This would, this would bring the salary down from its current rate um, and be lower than the local average for an assistant superintendent. So I think it's a responsible, uh, I think it responds to the um, level of the uh, job and the current um, economic conditions and uh, fair market value in a favorable way. All right. The superintendent has made a proposal. Do we have a motion and a second? I'll second. I'll, I'll make a motion to. That's a second. Okay, and this is a motion to approve this, the tenant's recommendation? Yeah. Including the uh, 114 to 119? Okay. Just want to make sure we have that motion as yes. to what exactly Including it is. That. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, discussion. Uh, Mr. Mudge and then Mr. Thompson. Did, uh, in, in our packet, uh, Dr. Oje, did, did the revised. Uh, uh, the revised uh, numbers, were that, was that in the package? To be honest? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't get you that. Listed as assistant superintendent for teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. Salary range 114 to 119. That's in here. Yeah, Mr. Thompson. I have had, uh, were you throwing that? Uh, yeah, I, I, so this is, this is the, uh, this is the updated position description on page 120. Uh, excuse me, 203. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I had uh, had several conversations with the uh, superintendent and expressed my concerns that we have a again this informational technology te technology assessment, which we have not discussed yet, and uh, it's it's going into a committee for uh, a good scrub and a good review. Uh, but I want to make sure that this. The portion of this uh, position, which is down in the uh, lower third of the page, packet page 203, 
oversees staffing and budget for informational technology, the IT multi-year strategic plan, IT advisory committee, all planning involving use of technology for educational purposes, and the district student information system. I just want to make sure that we don't tie our hands ahead of time to the um, eventual uh, what has been hoped for maybe the last five or six years that we've been trying to um, consolidate some functions here in the town. Um, and I, I would look forward to having this individual, whoever is hired for the assistant superintendent, to um, be able to very uh, easily and willingly fit into the new uh, structure that will be uh, discussed and voted upon in the future, and I'm going to vote yes for the position description. I, I just um, I appreciate that, and I just want you to know that I, I don't. I, you know, I have reviewed the e-alert study. I know we're going to be talking about that very soon. I don't see any conflict with the role of the assistant superintendent and anything that could come out of that study. Mr. Welch. Um, <clears throat> I have to say that times times have changed. And what we did um, as little as a year and a half, two years ago in salary for positions um, has changed. And uh, I've got a couple of things that I wanted you to know about. <clears throat> I asked for uh, Rhode Island Association of School Committees to uh, give me the salary of the positions of uh, assistant superintendent at both East Greenwich and Barrington, um, both smaller districts, uh, both high-performing districts. But every time we compare ourselves, we one of the things that we do is we compare our, our performance to both of those districts because we always seem to be less than they are or lower than they are. We're not their equal, and for a lot of reasons, and I understand that. Um, but we we have a habit in this district of paying more than both of those districts, okay? And I don't find that acceptable, quite frankly. And so I'm going to tell you that the assistant superintendent salary in East Greenwich is $108,000. And I'm going to tell you in just a second, if I can get right to it, um, the salary for uh, this, the assistant superintendent in uh, in Barrington just bear with me for a second assistant superintendent in Barrington is a hundred and eight thousand dollars now I had suggested that we use a range of 110 to 120 and let the, the applicant that is recommended to this committee um, be the reason why you pay more or less than what has been recommended. I'm going to tell you that <clears throat> my feeling is knowing full well the budget concerns that we have going forward, you're going to be looking at a three-year contract. You're going to be questioned, and rightfully so, by the town council and the taxpayers in this community about how and where you spend your money from this point forward. You can't shy away from it. You can't say, well, we weren't in that budget yet. Well, if you're going to sign a deal for an assistant, assistant superintendent for three years, you better think about it long and hard. And I'm telling you that I would rather use a range of 110 to 120. Let the applicant come before us with the recommendation and let us then decide what it's going to be. To say the 114 to 119, the former uh, assistant uh, superintendent in our community was getting 119.8. I'm sorry, folks. Um, Make a motion. I can't. I cannot. A motion on the table. I cannot support this. Can, can I respond to that, please? Absolutely. Uh, I, you know, I've had this conversation with Mr. Welch, and, and I have a lot of respect for him, and this is nothing personal. Um, I, I have also brought to your attention recently uh, information from two other districts, South Kingstown and Westerly, who have populations more. Uh, in fact, those populations are a 1,000 students less than North Kingstown. The size of the population matters here. Um, North Kingstown is 
by far, uh, you know, uh, in the range of 1,500 to 2,000 more than East Greenwich and Barrington. So a, a, a huge difference in the amount of people to oversee the number of schools, the number of principals. South Kingstown has 1,000 fewer students. Westerly is roughly 1,000 fewer students. And those assistant superintendents, similar structure, structure to North Kingstown, those assistant superintendents make more than this range. This range puts us in the low end of that group. Um, I am not asking for anything for the assistant superintendent that I wouldn't ask for any other job classification. I feel that these are tough economic times and that we have a responsibility to do a couple of things. We've got to acknowledge these, those tough economic times and not be greedy. And that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to put this in a competitive place so that we can attract a, a, a qualified person who is going to be a, a good person, but also to acknowledge that we should be going backwards a little bit. My salary went backwards a little bit. We're asking that in negotiations that we're currently doing. We've asked that in negotiations uh, in the past with our teachers. But we've tried to keep those ranges within a fair market value. To, you know, there's, there's a lot going on in, in a lot of context to be taken into account in comparisons with Barrington and East Greenwich. And, and I can understand why we would want to strive to get those kinds of scores. That's a very important thing. But a lot of the scores have to do with socioeconomic status of towns. That's correct. And so you look at any state in the union and you find the two districts with the highest socioeconomic status, and I can guarantee you they're going to be in the top grouping for their test scores. So to say that that's completely on, you know, the assistant superintendent is not necessarily the truth. Um, this district, you know, we just saw tonight that we have, we're third in the state for our, our reading and writing. We're not necessarily third in the state for socioeconomic status. So I think that we have reason to say, you know, this district is maybe overperforming in terms of socioeconomic status, and that's something to be very proud of. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Barrington and East Greenwich. I know a lot of the people who work there, and they work very hard, and they do a lot of things well. But that's got to be taken into account. The point I'm trying to make is that when you look at the amount of responsibility involved, all of the districts that I've just mentioned, the two that I've mentioned, the two that Mr. Welch have mentioned, we are at least a thousand students more. That means dozens of teachers more. That means more administrators to oversee. That means more people, more items to oversee. This is also a position that has IT included in it. In a lot of those other districts, the job description does not include oversight of IT. So we're piling that on. In acknowledgement of all that, we're going backwards. This range was over 119. We're saying the high point would be 119 if this person has veteran status and that sort of thing. The low would be as, as low as 114. This is a person that would oversee our administrators. Our highest paid administrator next to this person is making 113. I think it's appropriate to start at 114 and go to 119. Hmm. Mrs. Benson, you had your hand up. Yes, I did. but. Um... Thank you, Dr. O'Day. You brought out many of the points that I was going to say. Number one, the difference in enrollment. And I was glad to hear you mention the socioeconomic conditions of a community. Sometimes I think we forget that we do have a population of people like that. That was what I gave. I think I gave Maureen a copy to put it in the meeting minutes about the unemployment in North Kingstown, the percentage of the people that are unemployed. And after reading this, and one thing, I like the way that you left it when you said, and other duties to be assigned, which means that every time you ask an employee to do something and they are capable of doing it today, that's not in my contract. I think it's a very good contract, and you gave a very compelling answer to many of the questions that we have, and to continue to say Barrington and East Greenwich, look at the difference in the property tax 
we pay more on a thousand than they do in East Greenwich, and more on a thousand than they do in Barrington. So, I see the need of an assistant superintendent, and with the requirements that we have with the evaluation, if you're going to get a good person to do it, and if you read many school districts in Upper New York State, Vermont, and other places are putting in ads for people for these positions. And I'm sure they pay them according to the cost of living in that community. So I agree, we do need a assistant superintendent, and I agree wholeheartedly with the salary range. All right, I think I'm the only person who hasn't talked. Um, when I came onto the school committee uh, five years ago, we had a curriculum director, we had a grant director, we had an IT director, and we had a supervisor of IT. We have one of those people now. So we have eliminated three positions in now that we have the one that we've put together. We also have the principals who will be um, reporting to the curriculum director um, slash assistant or, or assistant superintendent of teaching and learning. So I think it would be appropriate that this person be making more than your principals. Right now, we don't have the salary range that much higher than our highest principal. It's only $1,000 higher. Obviously, when we find this person in place, we'll look at the salary range, or uh, I should say a recommendation will be made by the superintendent as to what specifically go in the salary range. But I agree with Mrs. Benson that the salary is appropriate because it is above the, um, the person that they're going to be supervising. It would be rather awkward to have the salary be below the people that they are supervising. So, so for that reason, I think this is an uh, appropriate recommendation. I think this person will still have a lot on their plate, and they will have a lot to do with all that we are asking of them. And, but I am confident that we will be able to find someone who can step up to report to this position. So we have a motion on the table. Chair? Yes. I'd like to comment on, on Mr. Welsh's comments. I think they deserve uh, uh, some discussion. Uh, I, I fully understand what Mr. Welsh is saying, and I kind of support that. But, you know, I don't, I don't see a real issue here. If, you know, if you put in 110 to 120, you know, that, that's what, what harm are you doing there? You're going through a process anyway. So if Mr. Welsh wants to make a motion, you know, I'd, I'd second that. Okay. Uh, uh, we have a motion on, no, don't no. we? We have a motion on the table. Well, amend the motion, obviously. But uh, you can vote the motion up or down. Can't you, you can't amend the motion? We should deal with the motion on the table. Oh, yeah. But and then if, you, if no. the motion fails, then you can make a different motion. No, no, no. I, I can amend. Oh, Mr. Welsh, I could amend this motion. Are you saying, suggesting that I, we can't amend the motion? Your motion is to approve the recommendation of the superintendent for the job description and a current salary range of 114 to 119. Yeah. Now you want to amend the 114 to 119? Well, I'm suggesting that if Mr. You know, Welch wants to put in 110 to 119, that that's that, I don't see that as a, a, a something to strangle the process. You can amend the motion. No, I, I, I thought so. So. All right. There's a motion on the floor. Are we going to take a vote on the motion on the floor? If so, roll call vote. Melvoy Benson. Yes. William Mudge. Yes. Kimberly Page. Yes. Joe Thompson. Yes. Richard Welsh. I'll go and vote along with the rest of the committee. <laughs> yes. Follow the crowd. You may get into it. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Well, I, so I didn't expect that to happen after so, the conversation. So, they, so you didn't amend it. You voted on the motion that was right. 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 Okay. Well, you didn't make a motion. No, I know. Yeah. All right. Do we have any other unfinished business? Too late for the amendment. Um, new business. Um, this is something we've had on the um, the school committee agenda for quite some time. This would not be anything to vote on, 
But I put this on here some time ago as part of a discussion as to how the committee wanted to get things to the agenda. Because we've had various times where um, people have asked for things to be on the, the agenda and sometimes people have felt things haven't come to the agenda. So I wanted to ask the committee how you wanted the process of how things come to the agenda. Um, obviously, right now, according to BE, it's the sort of thing if somebody makes a suggestion and then Dr. Jay makes a recommendation where it goes, and Mr. Welch and I, when we meet with him, um, we either uh, put things on the agenda or we don't. Sometimes we put things um, where we feel would be the best place to put them on their agenda, like under correspondence. And we'll stu still work through that process when we have citizens ask us to put things on the agenda. But I am asking this specifically for how school committee members want to put things on the agenda, which I consider different than um, the general public. So that is the basis for the discussion. There is no vote here tonight. This is a discussion. Mrs. Benson and then Mr. Thompson. I would like to express that if a school committee has an item that they want on the agenda, before they decide the president and the vice president, I think you would owe that school committee member the courtesy of discussing with them why and what and what was the reasons, because they can generate from many of things. They can be generated from the community. They can be generated from citizens who have different things they won't expect. And I think, and I'm going to tell you, I think it's an insult if I take the time and fill out to have something on the agenda and you and Mr. Welch decide you don't want it on there. Well, I didn't campaign for that. And the people didn't send me here to vary their concerns, and then you all think it's not worth putting on the agenda. Now, I had that to happen to me twice under the past administration. And I thought it was very important. The people thought it was very important. But neither one of you, the, the roles are reversed, came to me and said, why did you put that on there? I think that's infringing on an elected official's rights. I don't think any of us would put on there, have a demonstration in uh, bikinis. <laughs> but for you to decide after I write out a thing without consulting me, it, it just doesn't suit right. In other words, the shoe don't fit too well. So you'd like to have um, have the have myself or Mr. Welch come in and have the discussion with you. That's first. exactly before you decide that you don't want something on the agenda. All right. So my question then goes one step for further: is we have the discussion with you. You're still very um, wanting that particular item on the agenda, but let, let, let's take it the other way around. This is, this is my issue, actually, or I should say my quandary is a better word, is that or say that you're the chairperson and I say to you, I would like to have a soda bottle at every station here uh, um, for the, the school committee members and I'd like that up for discussion. And you say, well, Kim, first of all, so it doesn't fall within our wellness policy, and so I don't think that would be a good idea, and no, I'm not going to put that on the agenda. And then I say, but I really like that on the agenda. How do we want to go through the process of when I have my wish that I want something on the agenda and you don't feel it's appropriate to put on the agenda, how do we want that process to go? My answer to you for that is... Any school committee member that doesn't know enough about education, ethics, the social being of this committee would want to put something on the, on the agenda that's improper, then I think that committee member should be able to address the whole, super, uh, the whole committee. Are you directed and ask her? to go in and speak with the superintendent and see what he says. My point is this. The superintendent, we hired him for education. 
And if the student did, if the member did want the soda, and he thought it wasn't, and you couldn't appeal to them then, well, that person isn't really representing the community too well, because the name of the whole thing is compromise. Mr. Not to downplay the intelligence and the sincerity of the men member by just arbitrarily you deciding that you don't want that on the agenda without talking to them. I, I agree with you. I don't want this to be an arbitrary process, and so that's why I'm asking the committee, what do you want the process to be? Because when I've made decisions, some people have said, even after I've talked to them, that they feel as if it's arbitrary. So I'd like to know what process the committee would like to take so that it doesn't appear that I'm being arbitrary. You know, do we want to bring that forward as a vote? Do we want to um, have this be lots? That's, that's what I'd like to know as to how the committee would like to have that, that item, rather than just me saying yes, no, and then the committee getting angry because they don't like my decision. I think it was very amount of time spent last week, uh, the last meeting, describing our purpose here, and they said education. And if it goes that far, I think our educational leaders should make the decision. Hmm? Okay, so you would want Dr. O'Shea. Got it. No, uh, okay. Mr. Mudge. I, I totally disagree with that. I totally disagree with that hypothesis. At worst case, at worst case, you know, if, if a member brings a, an, an item up, for example, tonight and he wants it on next week's agenda, if he gets a second, you know, that should, should pass. But let's go back. What is the current policy, and what does the current policy say? The, the current policy does the current policy does not give you know the superintendent you know the authority to say something should be on the agenda or not. It's a school committee agenda. He prepares it and so forth and so on and oversees it. But it's a school committee agenda. And you know what, if he wants something on it, you know he. He's got to get it approved as well, <laughs> to my way of thinking. But I don't think there's, you know, if you look at the authority of the chair, the, the authority of the chair has a responsibility to chair the meeting. But it doesn't say that the, 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 uh, the chair or the vice chair, you know, makes the decision on what should be on the agenda or not. And I interpreted the policy is if you submit it to the, to the chair, that, you know, it's going to be on the committee. Now, I might be wrong. But Mr. Mudge, just to, for clarification, um, this is on page 195. Your policy um, states, and, and, and I'm not saying that this is the way I want it or anything, but just to clarify something that you just mentioned, uh, under number six on page 195, setting the meeting agenda, the agenda for each committee meeting shall be prepared in advance by the superintendent in cooperation with the committee chairperson and vice chairperson. That's the way we have been proceeding. So it, it does not mention anything about, you know, um, how uh, agenda items would be placed on by, you know, uh, whether it's um, uh, school committee members or members of the community or anything. That, that's just not mentioned in, in the policy. Maybe it should be mentioned, but it is not. So I just, you know, you, you were uh, saying, what does the current I, policy say? That's what the current policy says. I, I thank you for bringing that to my attention. By the way, uh, Madam Chairman, I appreciate you bringing this up for discussion. That's a, I think it needs to be discussed and so forth and so on. But uh, you can uh, put your hand down, Mr. Mudge. You're, you're being recognized, so you can speak. That's my. <laughs> isn't it nice? Hey, my nervous twitch here. It's to speak. But uh, uh, you know, I, I view the, the superintendent's role is just to put something on the agenda to, to prepare it. It's a kind of a you know a preparation thing to get all the facts together and so forth and so on and make sure it's it's there. Okay, and it's it's it's, uh, it's compliant with our rules and regulations. I think there is a procedure for 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 submitting. Uh, yeah, that, that's on page 196. 196. Wish I had my glasses with me. Yes, I'm not. Right now, we have a procedure that people turn in a a request to have something on the agenda, and I think that procedure has been working fine. 
It's then where things are put on the agenda. It has been at the discretion of the superintendent and the chair and the vice chair. And I don't think we, well, we have had some disagreements with members of the community. I'm more concerned about men members of the committee as to how you want to make that decision. Um, and so that's why I'm bringing this forward to say, if, if you don't like the discretion part, which I can understand, then how do we want to do this? So I'll go to Mr. Welch and then I'll come back to you, Mr. Mudge. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I can see the issue with, uh, without any problems, but as far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> If the consensus of this committee wants something on the agenda after it's been rejected by the the chair and the vice chair, then it goes on the agenda. And the consensus, in my mind, would be at least a majority, four people. So if the person um, finds that it was rejected to go on the agenda, then why not just accept the fact that, that at a meeting the subject will be brought up and as long as four people, the majority of the committee, say we'd like to see that on the agenda, it goes on the agenda. Be done with it. Democracy. Oh, man. Majority but, wins. Oh, man. Mr. Welch's um, point is, is, as I read it on, on no. again, page um, 196, that there's a process for submitting I'm items. About that. Um, there is the discretion of the superintendent and the committee chair and vice chair and they have 14 days to respond to it. If it's not on there, the it says the committee reserves the right of placement on the agenda under the heading uh, the committee deems appropriate. So after that, that time, if, if they're not happy with the fact that something w that was requested to be on the agenda didn't get there, the committee can vote for that to go on. Okay. Mr. Mudge, then Mr. Thompson, then Mrs. Benson. Uh, <clears throat> wrong with this policy? I believe that if, if we're going to have democracy, okay, and that if anyone makes a motion here and it's seconded to have an item on the agenda, then it should be on the agenda. And the reason I'm saying that, if a consensus is that we don't want to have it on agenda, now we get into politics, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, okay, uh, and there's other, could be parochial reasons, uh, self-sustaining, you know, the reasons that, that, that people don't want certain things on the agenda. And, and, uh, uh, and I think it's necessary that at least if two people say you know, that the second that an item gets on the agenda, then it should be placed on agenda. Now, maybe you might not want to talk about it. Okay, everyone may vote it down afterwards, but you still have a full discussion of the issue. And that's the important thing. You have a full discussion of the issue. And that's what's we needed in this process, because how can we make good decisions for this community when we can't have a full discussion, both sides, pro and con, on an issue? That's the important thing. That's what governance is, is to get everyone's input into an issue and have a d debate back and forth on whether we want this issue or we support this or we don't support that. That's the, that's the essential part of this thing, is discussion. And that's why, you know, if, if we can get a second, uh, somebody gets a second, he wants something on the agenda that you folks feel it isn't, isn't correct because it gives all this power to two people again, okay? It's, I just think it's, it's, a, it's not the way we want to run our government. We want, we want to have discussion. We want to have uh, open discussion and comments. We don't want to hide things from from the, the public. Thank Mr. You. Thompson. Well, I think if I understand what Mr. Mr. Welch was saying, he's saying that if someone wants something on the agenda, but the majority says no, we don't even want to discuss it, then it will never be discussed. And I think that's not the right. That's not why I ran to be on the school committee. I think what we should do is bring the items up, get them on the agenda just by request, and then discuss them. And then if, if the majority of the school committee says, no, we don't agree with that, your issue or your, your motion, then you're voted down. But at least the, the townspeople who voted for us to be on the school committee have had their say. We're their representatives. 
Um, I think one of the problems I've had has been, uh, I'm just going to talk about agendas in general. Uh, these reports that we have at the beginning of the, of the uh, meetings, we, we have anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour taken up with reports that we don't even ask for, we don't necessarily want them, uh, I don't know where they come from. That's, you know, maybe some of them we could get uh, by paper instead of a, an oral report. Uh, and then we end up getting criticized by the public for not getting through the, the consent agenda. Um, the other one is that uh, we, you need to bring up an item 14 days ahead. Perhaps we don't need 14 days ahead now that you've uh, seemingly, I guess we've unilaterally changed the, the, uh, the whole process of getting an agenda out to the public. We used to put it in the newspapers. Now we're not. We never discussed it. It was never brought up for a motion. Uh, there was no debate. Uh, I wanted to say some things about how important the newspapers are in this community and how appreciative I am that the newspapers uh, and the media in general come out here for these meetings because if we didn't have the media, we'd hardly have anybody in this room. Uh, the ways to get things on the agenda, I would say it's easy. Either uh, when an issue comes up and something occurs to us, some you know, Bill might say something that, that makes me think, oh, we should talk about that. So I'll say, could we put that on the agenda for the next meeting? Uh, that would be one way. Or this written report that uh, Mrs. Benson points out. You know, you go down to the administration building, you take the report, you say, I'd like to talk about such and such. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to bring it up again. But in your packet, page 40, you can even read where I wanted to do uh, an item and, and talk about it. And I've been trying to talk about it since April. And it has been squashed every time. It has not been brought up. It has not been discussed. It's not been in the packet. The townspeople have not become aware of it. And I'm giving up on it. But all I can tell you is that I think there's going to be a large number of people out there who have serious reservations about something that we've done and it has not been discussed and they have not heard about it in public. And, and these are the kinds of things that if, if you put one person down and don't let them get their ideas out, if, you, if, if people yell point of order, point of order and interrupt them when they're trying to speak, then the, the people who have sent them here to these meetings are not being properly represented. Uh, the packets, I want to talk about that. Um, I really appreciate getting the packet. Uh, it comes very late in the game. Um, for example, there was, uh, there was an item in here uh, that we had trouble kind of like trying to figure out what's going on. And I, I looked at the date on the letter that submitted this report, and it was July 29th. Uh, I know the town, the town council uh, in their meetings, they do a thing where they send the packets around to the individual's houses, and when they get a report, they send it around so the people have really enough time to look things over. I noticed a couple of times that uh, both me and Mr. Mudge have had trouble kind of saying, well, where is that stuff? Because there's 200 and something pages of material that we had basically one day to go through in order to get our thoughts together. Um, the uh, unilateral decisions, I've already talked about that. Uh, the numbering system, just the numbering system that you use on the agenda is, I, I don't know why you're doing it. It's, it probably comes from, you, you've just done it that way in the past with the one, Roman numerals ones and the ABCs and the ones, twos, threes. I don't know why you don't just, uh, you know, number it one through 30. And, and that way it'd be so much easier. We spent a lot of time kind of scraping around and trying to figure out where we are. Uh, and um, I, I truly appreciate the fact that you've allowed us to talk about this because this has been a source of a lot of frustration to me personally, and I'm, I'm very happy that we're talking about it. Thank you very much. Mrs. Benz, oh, Dr. Ajay. I just want to, um, you know, respond to something Mr. Thompson said. Um, you know, I, I understand your point about wanting to put something on the agenda. What happens in the situation where, uh, for whatever reason, a committee member um, just never wants to let an issue go. And uh, week after week, we'll want to bring an item up, even though uh, there may have been a vote on that item and it's already been um, addressed. Um, but that committee member feels, you know, I want to continue to talk about this. Where is the limit? Is uh, under, under the 
what you're asking to have happen is there any limit on that or or must you know so if the committee says listen we've talked about that we're satisfied with the answer we want to put this issue to rest for a while and, and deal with other issues. If you're, is, is that if you're asking me that question, Ms. I will Benson, answer. Yes, I'm asking you that question. Okay. My answer is if I'm given the chance to, to make a motion and that motion seconded and we have an open and honest discussion without people interrupting us and yelling point of order, uh, and then there's the vote and the vote's taken and I'm voted down, that's it for me. But I'm then, happy but then, with well, that. Well, my question is, can you bring it up the week after that? And, if, and the week you, after that? If you're talking you... about an item in which I was recorded as voting yes on an issue that I did not vote on. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about any particular item. Okay. I'm, I'm being purely hypothetical. Yeah, go ahead. Um, what is to prevent, under, under what you're asking to have happen, what is to prevent a school committee member, for whatever reason, whatever issue that is really important to them, and it's, you know, it's uh, July, or it's the first meeting in August, and they bring it up, and it's a, it's discussed, and it's voted down. And then the next meeting, they say, "Well, I don't want to let this go. I'm going to bring it up again, and I'm going to bring it up every week I possibly can, and force the committee to have another discussion about this." When does that end? I think the Roberts Rules of Order keeps you from doing that, and that's why I was using that as a little bit of a clever ruse in order to bring up a certain issue uh, for a, for a revote because I was recorded as voting yes, but I think if someone votes no on an issue, then, then they're not allowed to bring it up again under Roberts. I think but that's the it. Is, I'm going to interject I, here, folks. I'd like it to is, comment, too, yes. on that, please. Okay. Let me interject, though. It is okay. 9.55. I think we've had a very good discussion on this, so I would request that um, any um, further discussion on this item um, be wrapped up. You know, do a quick summary of your ideas so that we can get to adjournment because we usually like to adjourn by 10 and I appreciate the, the discussion and um, that we've been doing on this. So, Mrs. Benson is next and um, may yeah, I just be... make a quick is... comment? Um, yes. Well, skip um, yeah. uh, 4D, the policy. Yeah. Um, you went on to the um, assistant superintendent's thing. So if the policy D1 was something you wanted to get to, you did skip it. Yes, I, I skipped it on purpose because okay. this, right. this, this, this um, discussion relates to it. This discussion yeah. okay. relates to it. And I felt like we really needed to have oh, this discussion this before we could go back okay. to voting on BE. Okay. So, yeah, I appreciate that. But, yes, I did do that on purpose. Okay. So, Mrs. Benson, then Mr. Mudge, and um, like I said, we're wrapping up here, folks. Um, the statement that um, Dr. O.J. brought back, and if you don't give it up, if something is that important to you and you can't find enough nouns, pronouns, and a couple of adjectives to bring it out without bringing it out in the same suit, it doesn't need to be. If you're smart enough to reconfigurate it and put it on the agenda, it deserves its right place like anything else. But that would have to be some reconfiguration of it because there are many things that we don't want to give up, but we are in a democracy. And if we outvoted, we outvoted. Yep. That's the way it goes. But if it's that important and you can't do enough research to reclothe it, redress it, and bring it back, then it wasn't that important to you. I, I just I just feel that the current policy does allow for what you're you're advocating for right now. I disagree. It does allow for the committee to to ask for something to be on the agenda, and and if it isn't handled in a timely manner, that they can ask for a vote from the committee to put it on the agenda. That's okay. And the majority would rule. So the policy already says that. So I don't think we need to make a change. Mr. Mudge. Yes. Uh, first of all, I disagree with the, uh, our superintendent. Uh, you know, I think this is a school committee issue. It's not an administrative issue. And I truly think, Dr. O'Shea, is that this matter should be handled by the school committee. This is a school committee agenda. Well, I'm not okay. saying that. And, I should or shouldn't. I'm just saying the policy says that the superintendent with, with the chair and vice chair set the agenda. I'm just saying that's what the policy we, says. We need to clarify that, okay, I believe. 
Okay. But with that said, is there are very good reasons for people, and Mrs. Benson mentioned that if you're stubborn enough and you think you, you have reason enough to bring something up, you should bring it up. But my concern is why? Just like somebody gets arrested or goes to jail or you want to hang somebody. Suppose there's new evidence that comes up. Suppose we didn't have a full and complete discussion of all the information and you get shut down. That's a good reason to bring things up. Well, the, okay? the, the policy says you can as long as you have enough votes to, to do it. Oh, no, no. It. I see. But now you haven't let the discussion. My, my, my point complete. is if, if you're looking to change the policy to something more in line with Mr. Thompson was pointing about, uh, out, then you, you, you wouldn't necessarily be following through on the democracy statement that you said earlier. It would be one person can dictate what's going to be talked about every night. That's not democracy. Well, but again, if, if, that, if anyone here feels that there hasn't been a complete and thoughtful discussion on an issue, that's what we're talking about. That, that person if, if, can ask okay. that it be brought on the agenda and, and the democracy, the, you know, the, a vote will be taken, whether it goes on the agenda. Well, you, you, people may not want to hear the no, evidence. People no. might want to hear the, 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 the response. You see what I'm saying? So my question here to the committee is, um, my closing question is, do you want to further this discussion on how we do the school committee agenda, or do you want the policy committee to take this back and relook at um, or re-examine based on this discussion? I recommend we speak, at, uh, speak about the policy as a committee at the next meeting again. I second that motion. If it's a motion or a recommendation. No, we're, we're not going to, it's no motion. Okay, no, because well. It's just for discussion. So you, you all want to f still talk about how. Can you? Okay. We can still talk about this process. And um, like I said, it's been, it's been on the school committee agenda quite a few times and we haven't gotten to it. So I'm now looking for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you very much, and good evening. Bottom of the eighth. Are they? Yeah. Are they? Oh, good. Yeah. That's because.